Greetings, family. This is Bomani Tamba, and we're live on Revolutionary Cam. And family, I have my good brother here today, and we're going to get into some important uh, topics, as we're going to show right here. Black Union and African Nation Building with Bomani and Kala Genesis live here on Revolutionary Cam. All right, my good brother, how you doing today? I'm doing fine, brother. Glad to be here with you, brother. All right, perfect, man. I'm going to... Can you see the post of the subject? Yes, perfect. Perfect, man. Uh, let's uh, let's get right into the introduction so you can introduce yourself and how you got on this path, on this pan in this Pan-African world. And then we talk about how you and I connected and how we're going to work together to do some uh, wonderful things. Right. And then, you know, we're going to get into the topic of the of things. Right. Yeah, we're going to talk about uh, my perspective of what this is, from Manny's perspective, and he'll tell his perspective. I'm going to tell my history of how I got into the movement, how Bomani and I met, and why why I follow Bomani and why I support this brother, uh, and I believe in him with everything I got and everything, you know, so... There's very few people, if you notice, I don't go on a lot of shows, you know. There's very few people out there that I support and I put my name behind, okay. And and I uh, am the, uh, one of the founders of a group, a social network called the Black African Infrastructure Organization, now called the Black African Infrastructure Organization Global Pipeline, right, which is an app, right. Very few people do what we do. We have a social network that we have for seven years now. And it has thousands so of members, all right? And the membership is growing, right, on the social network. And this is how I'm introduced to everybody. There's nobody that does that I'm serious with on this, this movement. If if you're not in our social network, I have nothing to do with you. I don't take you seriously. I, I don't I don't take I don't promote you. So if if, if somebody's not in the BAIO, right? They, they I don't take them seriously. I don't that don't mean they're not good people. That don't mean you should not listen to them right but the people that i bring on the bao is bao is a is a network of social of organizations and different ideologies under one banner and the banner means land infrastructure nationhood that means that we have to we as black the black people have to have our own land we have to have build our infrastructure and once we have infrastructure and then that gives the uh, place where nation building can start now, when people say nation building and everything, I think people confuse two things. The idea of a nation is the ultimate, the end game of any people. Nation is the is the highest elevation of a people. That means before you are a tribe, after your tribe, your family, and everything, when that the, the thing that holds you all together is a sense of nation. That means you're all on one path and one aim, one destiny. And when the nation, uh nations generally have uh, a place to practice nationhood and it has laws and infrastructure to protect those people that's why uh, uh, uh land is so important you cannot be a nation right and and your substance is controlled by somebody else the problem is unlike other people through our history who became nation a nationhood right it was very easy you bring the tribes together, the clans together, you promote intermarriage, inter, uh, you reconcile religious differences and everything. And you have a stand, which means stand, means stand means stand, you know, or land. Ireland means land of what? The Irish. Scotland means what? Land of the Scottish. Pakistan, stand means stand. Where the Pakistan, Pakistan means where the Pakis stand, okay? The Kurdish people want a Kurdish stand. That means a Kurdish land, a Kurdish place. The Kurdish, the, the world has turned its back on the Kurds and not given them a land, a stand, some place where they could be of their own. They could, where they control the laws, they control their own space. This is what all human beings desire: the fact that you have the land that you control. Well, people will ask me, "Well, Kala, uh, you have a lot of Africans who will leave." Africa. That's because Africa has never become a nation. It has never built the infrastructure. What we have is Africa is still uh, controlled and still a part of the European economic and social and political system. So therefore, until Africa becomes a nation state, which means black people. So, so in other words, basically what you have in Africa right now is groups of people who are not part of the African majority. They're there with their own infrastructure, their own institutions and everything. 
and they're bleeding the continent dry, sending resources out of the continent. And the government's uh, there just to facilitate the looting and the continued exploitation of the continent. So therefore, so therefore, we cannot look at African countries as examples of what we're talking about. When we talked about the uh, the Black African Infrastructure Organization, what we want to do is take the best of the best of the of Nigeria and all these countries, right, and start building each country uh, from the bottom up and the top down, and from the side inside out with Black ac Black African excellence, right? That means uh, if you have an engineer. The BIO mentality is if you have to leave Africa to get your education, your goal should be coming back to the continent to build. If you're going to, you're going to be, be a doctor, then you leave the continent for a certain amount of time, but you have a timetable to come back to the continent and build. Uh, uh, right now, Africa is, uh, uh, we, is, is basically the number one export Africa has right now is human export. Uh, there's a brain drain, an intellectual drain. So when people get educated, there's no, there's nothing to facilitate them to live a good life or have income and everything because everything goes out. And then to supplement that, Africa is relying on foreign aid to fill in the gaps. This is not an Africa what we call it Africa a state, a black state. A real black state can support itself. It does not need foreign aid. It can raise its own tax revenue. It can educate its own people. It can build its own infrastructure and it'll be self-sufficient. Now, the question may people may ask is, if we did all that, right, what, what, what we know ourselves, <clears throat> we as black people, right, we don't only know what, is, what it means to suffer. We only know what it means to have the poverty, crime, and, and fighting uh, oppression. We don't know what, it's, what, what uh, not being oppressed looks like. So this is why it's easy for us to backslide, right? You have Brother Bamani putting his life into this movement, right? And you got people out there questioning his motives. Why? Because they want to backslide. They don't want to see uh, uh, this happen. They don't want to see uh, uh, Brother Bamani uh, go forward, right? Because what that does is they'll take away their identity. Now, if, okay, if you're free and you got, you're got on your own land in Ghana, now, oh, now everything happens with what? Human exertion, human input, right? And then once you have human input, human exertion, then you the end game is to have peace and happiness. Some people don't want that. Some people would rather, uh, if they live in a nice life in Ghana or wherever like that, they'll come back to the United States to uh, uh, to join protests and everything because that's what they all they know. They don't have to come back to America. They could have you got people that have uh, enough money saved. They can live on the continent, and build a farm. They could do anything, but they would rather come back to America under the guise of oh oppressions in America. We got to fight racism. No, you fight racism by building your own institution. You build, fight racism by build, by not having to depend on the white man, you know, not depend on the Asian, everybody else. That's how you fight racism. Racism is a power play. And when you have power, then racism now affect you. There's some people have bought the notion that white the white man is like Thanos with the affinity stones, you know, he's all powerful. Uh, and it goes back to our culture, the Wizard of Oz, you know, you know, Fu Manchu. There's always some uh, 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 force out there uh, making us oppressed no matter what we do. White supremacy is global. Well, what about China? Uh, oh, see, white supremacy is controlling that. This is what we tell ourselves to basically to stay hunkered down in a state of mediocrity in America. It's a defeatist attitude. It's saying that uh, no matter what you do, there's always going to be white supremacy. No, so what's white supremacy? People, uh, people, when when we say that, well, why can't you uh, build uh, uh, cars? Why can't you build ships? Why can't you build all these things? No, it's easier to basically say, okay, we'll let the white people do that. Well, the Asian people do that, and we'll just fight for what we call equality. You know, it's not equality. You gotta say it with the word equality. You know, these are nice words that we were taught to say. Go ahead and repeat equality. You know. And the white man gives you a little crumbs here and you think you're getting equality. But that, well, over time, he could take all that stuff back from you. So basically what I'm talking about is this. When I first started, uh, I, I've been in the Pan-African movement all my life. You know, I'm in my 50s now. I first started uh, when I was, um, I would say when I was like 14. 
I, I read my encyclopedias uh, that my parents had in my house from back to front. I learned about African kingdom. Once I learned about that Africa had kingdoms like Mali and Songhai and this advanced West African civilization, it was just clear to me. I said, so in other words, basically we had, we had it. I see in, in, the, in the black people's mind, you have to be convinced that you could live in a black world, right? That you could be happy in the all black world. Once you are uh, fulfilled and, and believe that you could, your people could build a nice place for you, a civilized place for you to live, right? That's the first step. Many of our people are absolutely convinced that the white race is right. That Europe, America, white people have it all figured out. And so therefore, when black people fail, it's because we're incompetent, that's the way it's supposed to be. When white people fail, let me give you an example, right? Uh, the Dust Bowl, when uh, and the, the farms in Nebraska dried up and everything, the way that is basically told to us is that you as a black person, sympathy, all oh, those white people out there starving on the prairie and everything, oh, the Dust Bowl. The truth is they failed at farming. They could not do the things that the black people were able to do. And they overused the farm. They didn't do it. So, so therefore, their farms failed and they have to end up abandoning their farms. But the world is given when when white people fail, right? They're given sympathy, right? They say, okay, yeah, like when the stock market crash, right? They say, oh, the stock market crash because of blah 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 and everything, right? Because the whole thing is to protect this thing of white fragility, of white exceptionalism, and all the stuff like this. So when th stuff goes wrong with them, oh well, forces cause the stock. No, it was greed and incompetence that caused the stock market to crash. They were forewarned, but they didn't do it. People were basically uh, indulgent and they failed, right? But anytime a black man has a setback, right? Right away, we say, oh, you, you're a fool for even doing it. You, you don't, oh man, my God, that's the stupidest idea. It'll never happen. You, th you see, what, see where I'm going with this? When a white man fails, when a white man fails, right? It's, uh, oh, well, this happened. Like, let me give you an example. The space shuttle of 1986. I'll never forget that. I was in high school at the time. The space shuttle uh, that blew up, we're watching it on the screen, right, uh, in, the, in the auditorium in my high school. And the thing, next thing you know, space shuttle challenges blew up, right? And everybody's sitting there, what the hell happened, right? They'll give you a million excuses why that blew up, right? And you will have sympathy. But had that, that space shuttle been led by, let's say that space shuttle was an African space shuttle, the whole world would come back and say, see these Africans, man, they're trying to do this. Blah blah blah. Chernobyl and uh, uh, the uh, uh, the meltdown of Chernobyl, you know, nuclear meltdowns, right? Oh well, yeah, well, you know, no, no ever ever uh, uh, says where um uh, whether it's Ukraine or Three Mile Island or whatever like that, where you have a nuclear reactor meltdown. Oh no, well. But that basically is used to tell Africans why they should not have nuclear power. Because look at Chernobyl and blah, 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 nuclear waste and all this stuff like this, you know? So the bottom line is white people are allowed to fail. They're allowed to cause major disasters. The Exxon uh, Valdez in, in Alaska, right? The oil spill. The uh, Just recently, when Obama was president, the... Uh, um, the spill in the Gulf spill, where Gulf war, oil was just destroying the environment and everything. Basically, they did all that. They did some cleanup and everything, plugged it up, and then you forgot about it. It was wiped off the news media, everything. So white people can destroy the environment. They can do all the stuff like that, and you will give them another chance. You will say, uh, yeah, that was, that was happening, but hey, I don't, I don't care, whatever. So, so therefore, so that we're not playing with an equal playing field here. So in other words, when a black man all decides, you know something, there's some land in Ghana, right? A certain amount of acres, a, a chief says we're going to negotiate. Of course, there's not gonna, everything's not going to go smooth. You're dealing with a developing country and everything like that. Ghana has its own external problems and everything. And then we then when we question, okay, well, you know, Ghana's taking out a lot of debt and everything like that. Oh, you hate Ghana. Oh my God, these African Americans hate Ghana and everything, you know. But a white person can come to Ghana and give their honest opinion and everything. Okay, thank you, Mr. White Man. We'll take it under advisement. We'll take it under advisement. But a black man comes over and everything, and he uh, has deals and everything. Sometimes things work out. Sometimes things do. If you ever did business, you understand that, right? You understand. 
most of the time, uh, 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 people only show you the finished product, right? When they're done, okay, you know, this is how it goes. You don't know how it goes. If you was over every deal, if you was in on a GM when they first started, right, and listen to all their their recordings, you would say, these guys are a bunch of idiots. Look at these guys making mistakes. And it had, mistakes happen in GM when they're testing cars and say they were Ford and all these other people. They have, they, they have those trial and error. But in the end, right? People stuck it out in the end. They got, we have we have an automobile industry. Why is it that uh, when it comes to a black man or a black man who put something into a business and stuff like that, we can't give him the same benefit of the doubt? We got to right away go away with the uh, uh, oh oh man, this see what I'm talking about? You know, this is it's over and everything. No, it's not over. You know, we're gonna continue this thing, and we're gonna continue it till 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 it peds out. And it's going to win. In, well, we're going to ultimately going to win it in because we're not going anywhere and we're not giving up anything. So if you think we're going to just going to roll up and fold over, you are, you're serious, seriously mistaken. Yes, we're going to have some setbacks. Yes, there's going to be bumps in the roads. OK, but when it co comes down to it, we, we will prevail. And I, for one, have never given up on anything in my life. I'm very successful in life and anything I get ready to go to do, I'm going to complete it. I'm going to make sure with everything in my power, I'm going to make sure it happens. And so the bottom line is this. So how, it's just a matter of time before we have success. Let me give you another example, right? When you go to invest, right? That's what I said. Black people, we're new at this thing called investment. You don't make money. Uh, you see uh, uh, the end goal right away. Sometimes you have a, what they call penny stocks. You buy a penny stock, right? And next thing you know, uh, the, the stock is worth uh, $3. You sell, I'm gone, right? But the people who hold on, you look up and say, you see some white, rich nerd and whatnot. This guy is now worth $70 million. How do you do that? Why? Because he stuck with it. While people were like, nah, I don't like that and everything. He saw something and he said, okay, he watched everything. And then at the right time, man, he made the top stock split. And he's making lots of money and everything like that. He owns most of the share. He buys back stock from other people and everything. And he becomes a multimillionaire. He stuck it out. You rarely see black people, even outside the Pan-African world, get like that. Now, the black people who do do that, right, are like brothers like Reginald Lewis, the world's first black billionaire. 1987, he became... Uh, the uh, president of Beatrice uh, Holt Foods and Holdings, right, a hedge fund uh, operation, became a billionaire in the Cold War. So he was worth like three billion dollars, probably at today's uh, value, like eight nine billion. And he wrote a book called "Why Should the White Guys Have All the Fun?" And he was basically an anomaly. Why? How did he do this and everything? Why? Because he was not thinking like a typical Negro. Black people historically have lost patents. We've lost inventions and everything because we only want the quick money. We want it quick now. It's this thing called delayed gratification. People who are powerless, right, and self-doubters who are not winners, right, want instant gratification. If you can't show them right here, right now, and everything, they don't want. They don't want to believe it. And they're also susceptible to people telling them that this thing is not going to work. This thing is like, you better pull out. It's a scam. It's a scam. It's a scam. It's a scam, scam. And you believe it. Where, where if Bermani Tayemba was white and he was doing what he was doing, do you think there would be uh, 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 somebody named the unappealing Negro peeing uh, out there? No, of course not. People would let it play out because they'd be like, okay, here, you know, we'll do this here. We see this all the time. We see this with the Bernie Madoffs and all these other people, these Ponzi schemes and everything. They rate good. Some people made money. A lot of people lost and everything. But the bottom line, they let it play out. Why? Bernie Madoff can only do that because why? Because he has the complexion for the direction. You know, he has the white skin. And to the Negro P in mind, right, it doesn't matter how many times a white man fails and everything, that black people will still put their money with that guy because he's they're betting on white. But when a black man is doing something, when a black man is doing something, he's, uh, 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 we got to watch every little thing he's doing. We're, uh, 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 we're just waiting for him to screw up. We're waiting for him to mess up. With that. See, I told you so. so I, I, I thought this the whole time and all stuff like this, you know? This is nigga. This, you know, they'll say, look, 
in order for the black man, the African to live, the nigga has to die. The nigga has to die. The nigga in us has to die. That's all of us. We all got that nigga uh, gene in us, right? That's why we tear each other down. That's why we don't believe in each other. We don't we don't look at things long term. Long term is long term is why isn't there any uh, 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 when people talk about uh, black people in America, uh, African Americans, right? There are no shipping lines uh, linking the West with Africa going back and forth. I'm glad to see Nigeria is now building airlines connecting direct flights from Jamaica to Nigeria. That's a that's a that's a that's that's progress right there. So in other words, South South relationships, right? And in all, hopefully, we're gonna have uh, uh, with the BAO, we're gonna have different African countries linking with each other. Angola with uh, Liberia, Sierra Leone, and all these countries together, right? Because I asked my Angolan partners, on, how come you guys don't have any solid investments with other black countries, right? And they said, I don't know. Well, you know, we don't know. Why is all your business done with the UAE and uh, China and everything? Why is, why is Angola giving billions of dollars to Portugal and everything? Portugal is a failed state, basically. Why is, why is some of that money not invested in West Africa? And like, you know something, college genesis? You're right. We got to look at this thing, you know? I said, that's what what I mean by Pan-Africanism. When the black people, the black Africans work with each other to build Africa, to give the people of black people a, uh, a chance in life, a chance in life. And we're nothing but, and we as black men are nothing but cowards, right? And we don't at least give everything we can to give the next generation what we don't have. Because the gang members, the thugs, the drug dealers, the self-haters, the homosexuals, and all the other people, they're, they're, they're waiting in the wing to give them a future. When we say we're going to build something for Africa and African Americans across the seas and everything, everybody in the black world, the diaspora, has a chance. It doesn't mean everybody got to get up and leave and go to Africa, but it just knows that there's something outside the borders of America that you know that you can take pride in. And some black people, they don't know what that feels like. We don't know uh, what that means. We don't know if, if we have an alternative and, and we're not really pressed to be here and we can get on a plan and go someplace else where bl other black people like us are thriving and everything like that. And then what do we do? What does it do? What do we do with boss? You know, what do we do with uh boss? Like uh, you have this fool, like uh, Michael Eric Dyson on one hand, systemic racism, America's ir irredeemably racist. Or not. But our white brothers, this is then he calls white people, brothers and sisters. All this buck dancing and cooning and clowning and everything is not funny and not cute anymore. It's time for us as men, as black men, black women, black men to stand up like adults and be adults and, and put something in, in, uh, in, in effect for the future generations. What we're building right now, the grand of it and everything, I take pride in the fact that we're building, right? I know when, it, when it's all said and done, our future generations are going to have the glory. They're going to look back and say, yeah, I'm glad Bomani, Kyle, and all these people did these things, what they're doing. They stuck it out. They didn't fold their tent and run and everything. Because of that, we have settlements and shining new cities. We have industrial parks. You know, We have business technology centers uh, where uh, uh, HBCU graduates can go and help build in any part of the African continent and everything, and vice versa. Africans can come to, our, to America, and we can work back and forth together to build a future for ourselves that we don't have to rely on other people to do that. We can produce our own technicians, our own engineers, our own scientists, our own black excellence. We're not an inferior race. Yes, brother. Yes, brother. Up you mighty race. And that's, yeah. the, uh, and that's the thumbnail of what I have on uh, the image uh, for this uh, video, uh, brother Marcus Garvey. Um, we, are, we are not an inferior race. Yes, so and this is and when people ask me why I started this, right? Right, but let me tell you a background about myself, right? I was born in Jamaica, Queens, New York, right? Born in Jamaica, Queens, South Jamaica, Queens. Uh, some people say the, the poorest neighborhood in New York City, but it was like a working class neighborhood, right? But we had the largest housing project, 40 projects, right? When I was a kid, wow. 40 projects was free lunch, or 40 projects held us down, you know, you know. That free lunch box and went out there and 40 that held us down. We're not going walking with 40 projects, we're not. And the lunch programs, I, I I was around older black people. We had African beads, we had stuff like this. I mean, let me tell you, let me tell you about how South Jamaica Queens was. We had the most beautiful sisters in the world. All the sisters had barrettes in their hair. 
They had berets, corn rolls, and everything. It was like an urbanized African city, you know? It was like Africa, just beautiful, a paradise, you know, beautiful. And then when years later, you know, you go back there in the 80s and one of the 90s, when I, I see some of the girls I used to know children, they're strung out on crack, you know? And I, the, the pain, I see men that used to once take care of the children, right? Or out there trying to solicit girls, young women that they used to care for, for sex and stuff like that. And that hurt me. You know, when I was a kid, uh, it was such such innocence. Even the wino would be at the school bus stop, right, waiting for us to get off the bus. And when we got off the bus, all these black kids uh, coming from PS86, right, getting off the bus, my all the whole uh, whole neighborhood turned out the bus stop. Yes, clapping because they saw the rejoicing of seeing seeing what we're gonna do. We're gonna liberate them one day. You know, and I'm not gonna let those people down. You know, those people, those black people. A lot of people in our community believed in us back then, you know, believed in us back then. They were like, this is our, these are our children. These are the future. These are, these people are going to liberate us one day. You know, the wino on the street corner, he, he had a smile on his face. He know his life is over. He has nothing to offer. But he saw us on the bus. Y'all children, get that, get that schooling, get that education. You know, that was what we call black love. You know, that's what black love is all about. Black love means that, yeah, my brother is going to fall. He's going to make mistakes. But are you going to be there to pick him up? Are you going to wait till he falls and you're going to tear him down to make yourself look better? You know? Or if you see your brother has a uh, has a shortcoming, right? Why don't you, you know, work it out? Say, brother, let's, let's talk about this thing. Let's work this out. You know, we can do it. That's what black love is all about, you know? And that's what I'm about. Before you could talk about pan-Africanism, before you could talk about anything, you got to have love for your people. You have to have love for yourself. You have to have love for your own kind, you know, and love for your kind don't mean hating everybody else. This means they are not us, you know, as simple as that. You got the Jewish kid, the Chinese kid and everything. They got their shit together. What we have to do is find out who we are and get ourselves together. We're all descended, all of us here, descendants of the transatlantic slave trade, whether you from Jamaica, from the South, or you from uh, uh, Barbados or uh, Cuba or whatever. If you're a descendant of the transatlantic slave trade, you're in this with us. Your ancestors are a product of the Maafa, the Holocaust. We're children of the Holocaust. And the whole thing is, while the whole world's turned its back on us, we're bunkered down here in America. America does not know what to do with these people who are descendants of slaves. Pretty soon, they knew this day was going to come where we're looking back at what they did to our ancestors, right? And we want reparations. We want regress. And we cannot, in our, in our, in our soul, really say everything is okay. And the whole thing is this. There's a lot of Black people in America, and I'm going to say it right here, right, are hoping the Pan-African movement failed. So they have no other outlet than to basically be Americans. So we're basically, if you basically said, I'm an American, Thomas Jefferson was right. George Washington was right and everything. You are cursing our ancestors. These people cursed our ancestors. Thomas Jefferson and George Washington believed the black man was fit for nothing but slavery. That's a curse. That's an abomination to God Almighty. God didn't make anybody a slave. God didn't tell us our black skin was a, a, a mark of slavery. The white man did. So when we go out there and we wave the American flag and we do all the stuff like this, you are an abomination to our people. And then you got to uh, you, you dare have a nerve to talk about uh, what we Pan-African is doing. You got to dare have the nerve to wear American flag and call yourself ADOS and all this kind of nonsense and everything. You are an abomination. There's no way of getting around it. You are an abomination. You are a race traitor. The black man in America has no land. No, he makes no decision of himself. He does nothing he has is, is his. It's like being in prison. Nothing you have is yours. We make no decisions, no anything. Yeah, they put some black people here and there in power and everything like that, but that doesn't mean anything. What we are doing right now is telling the world that, yes, we have something to say. I grew up around strong black men. I grew up around black men I knew that were capable, right, of leading. I knew, I knew a, black, a lot of black men who cared about America, who cared about the world. They had something to say about the world. They weren't buck dancing. They didn't like what they saw in Hollywood. They said it. You know, I heard it in my life. They said, that's foolish. All this foolishness we have out here. They didn't agree with everything. 
And they got rid of those type of black men. They got rid of men like Bill Cosby and people like that try to put out positive images of black men. I grew up in a black patriarchy. I know what it's like for uh, for black people to be happy living in black households and black homes and black men being breadwinners. And the bottom line, it was sad. You know, the sad part about all this is sad part about all this is we never we basically after slavery, we were willing to forget it and forgive. But the white man won't forgive, forget. He's saying in the back of his mind, no matter what they say, right, what they do, if they're human, there's no way they can forget and forgive all the stuff we've done to them. They know that. They don't believe you when they say, when you tell them that things, oh, that's the past and things are gone and everything. They know that. They know that the only way you stay in line is through fear. Fear of being ostracized. The worst thing, type of fear is, is when they humiliate you in front of your own people. That's why they had to make an example out of Marcus Garvey. That's why they had to tear down all our great leaders and everything, right? Because make sure so you don't ever rise up against them. You don't ever speak out of turn. And then when they do, uh, when you do uh, 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 go along with them, they don't respect that either. They attack Colin Powell. Colin Powell is the most patriotic, uh, flag waving man. You could uh, a model black man and whatnot. They still they went after him. So where's all? Where do you got the game? No matter what, even if you do talk about I'm an American and all stuff like this, like that, they don't they don't respect that. Because they think you're a fool. They think you're crazy. They think you're just doing it for a paycheck. They don't believe in anything you've got to say. Now, when I come out and say, you know something, I just think that the black people, the African Americans, were a captain nation. We would be better if we had our own state, our own land on the African continent, and that we were basically coordinating with Africa to build Africa for future territory that if we want to emigrate out of here, we can. And those who want to stay in America, that's fine too. We don't, we can have half and half, we can have both. But there's people that say, no, no, you have to only be in America. That's what this is all about. People b- believe that if we, if the Pan-African movement keeps growing on the African continent, that's going to conflict with the Europeans' plans for what they have for Africa, which is making Africa their little dumping ground for goods and, and stuff like that, which goes on right now in Ghana. And like that. America, Africa is still a dumping ground for second-hand goods and everything like that. Africa can't get its textile industries up and running because everybody dumps their stuff on the continent. Nobody cares. Billions of dollars flow out of the continent for illicit funds. Africa loses like $90 billion a year in illicit funds. What does illicit fund mean? That means stuff that Africa could be producing themselves, right? They got to import or outsource to somebody else and everything, and that takes billions of dollars. Why it looks like there's all, there's all this money coming in the continent, but it, they're facilitating what they call a high-tech lo- uh, looting of the continent. Now, if the trade uh, and the commerce between Africans and African Americans and diasporans have that thing, and we had our own platforms that we're trying to build, it starts with all social networks, getting to know each other and everything, and then pretty soon we're gonna have sophisticated trading platforms and everything, we're all nothing but black African people are in this platform trading and building among ourselves and communicate among ourselves and everything. And it's like, oh, wow, we'll have control of the continent. We currently don't have that. Right now, uh, uh, we let uh, that that devil, uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, he comes down there to Nigeria a few years ago and eating some jollof rice, right, with a T-shirt on, you know, and, oh, Mark Zuckerberg. I say, Nigeria, are you stupid? You can create your own Silicon Valley and your thing, and you don't have to deal with him. What do you need Mark Zuckerberg for? You can build a Nigeria Facebook. Facebook generates billions of dollars a year. It puts out not just products in Africa, but ideas. People who want to promote certain things that, uh, again, you wonder how these, these, these uh, right now, Africa is unrecognizable. Why you see uh, 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 little girls wearing the lesbian uh, uh, rainbow symbols and stuff like that? How'd that go? Technology, social media. People have infiltrated the continent, right, with their propaganda all over the continent. 
And one of the things that they're infiltrating the continent with is this anti-African-American, anti-diaspora propaganda that's, that's going on in the continent, that's growing. And this is what we're this is what we're up against. But thank God the majority of Africans see through this. They see through this. And the bottom, and the whole thing is we have to just keep pointing out the fact that, right, we're here to do good. To our African brothers and sisters, we're here for you. Anything we do and everything, we both benefit from. And historically, African Americans have done a, a lot for Africa and never asked for anything in return. For example, uh, the South Africa, black people, black mayors throughout America, right, began the divestment movement. All our colleges and everything, because South Africa was a re world reserve currency. Let me tell you how it works. In South Africa, the rand in the 70s, the rand was equal to the dollar. How does it happen? Yeah. America's inflation was off the roof in the 70s. And all the way to the 80s. South African, uh, uh, the RAND was a stabling stabilizer of the world currency. So if you had a 401k, a pension, everything, you put that in gold bullion in South Africa. Same thing we're doing now. You know, we're going to do now among ourselves. South Africa do it, we can do it, right? Precious metals and everything on South Africa. South African corporations that produce cars and everything like that, because South Africa didn't have natural disasters and stuff like that, it was an ideal place to uh, 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 to put capital in. South Africa had the eighth largest economy in the world. And it was black South African labor, right, and capital coming from around the world that put money into South Africa. Why was that so big? Well, South Africa straddles two oceans, right? Well, the Arctic, the Atlantic, and the uh, Indian Ocean. South Africa also uh, was the major hub of the subregion. Let's understand this. The port of Durban, the port of Cape Town had railways that went all the way through the continent, all the way up to Zambia. So if you think of everybody on the subcontinent, right? All the products and everything that was made and uh, that you saw on sh supermarkets and shelves and Zambia and everything originated in South Africa. So when South African factory produces everything, it's producing for the whole continent. So all anybody had to do is put their money in South Africa. They're going to make money back. Money, it was endless. It wasn't just a South African economy. South Africa was the bread, was the industrial, it was the industrial base of the high continent. It, at the one time it had half, it supplied half the continent with electricity. Now, since the white apartheid government left, right? That sort of investment has slowed. One of the reasons why it's slowed because uh, during the time of the 80s, Robert Mugabe uh, built an alternate a railway from Z Zimbabwe to Mapupe, uh, uh, Mozambique. And so but Botswana was still relying on South Africa's infrastructure, electricity and everything like that. But Botswana and these countries started building their own infrastructure. So South Africa did not rely on South Africa. But the railway lines, that, that still uh, go from uh, the still the most of the goods from the sub the landlocked sub region come from South Africa. Now Angola is now has now built a railway, right? and its goal is to build a railway line from uh, uh, the Benguele in Angola all the way over to the coast of um, Dumalawi to the coast of Tanzania. So when that happens, right, you're going to have uh, 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 the Atlantic. And the Indian Ocean connected, right? And Angola is going to be a port of entry to the subregion. It's going to compete with South Africa. That's black power, you know, black power. So what I'm trying to say is this. By us, the BIO and the people that join our social network, we're privy to all this stuff, right? This is the, this is, this is the pan-Africanism that you, don't want, you won't hear on YouTube. This is the sort of thinking that you won't hear on YouTube. This is the sort of thinking that you're not going to hear from fools and Buffoons talk about, well, I'm a parent. They don't know what the hell's going on. They don't know what the, the real uh, struggle is. They don't know what the, what the plans are behind the scenes. But I get people all the time from all over the continent, high government officials, feed me information. This is what we're doing. This is what we're saying. Okay. 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 Why? Because they want us to be ready in the West, right, when the day happens that we could plug into all these networks that are being built. Africans are not stupid. Don't let YouTube fool you. 
They know that they need us and we know we need them. And this is not going to stop. No matter what you say, what you, which, all you people that keep uh, throwing shots at us, and all you people that keep talking all this nonsense, you are wasting your time. I suggest you find something to do. Take up knitting or take up crochet or something like that because you're not going to win. You can't have a hold of race of people down for 500 years and expect them to just sit back and just let you go, let it go on for another 500 years. No, we are building this infrastructure. We're going to build this thing whether you like it or not, and it's happening. So, so, brother Monty, you there? <laughs> I'm just taking over the show, man. I'm just like, yeah, hey, I'm here, absolutely. I can listen to myself talk all night, man. I can, I can listen. To myself. I just want to take all, take all the, take the show with me. <laughs> but uh, what do you, what do you think about what I said, man? You want to uh, absolutely, but I'm with you, and um, the forms of what you're talking about it leads to the practicality of what we're getting into. When we talk about what we're doing in Ghana, as far as uh, the Black Star Pan African community, we talk about land at the base of independence. Uh, those are some of the key points that you you made. So that was one of the key things that we did uh, with our investment in our Africa tourism uh, group. Uh, so now we have 15 acres plus 60 acres. That's 75 acres. Plus, you know, we have connections in the town. So now we can be a part of you know the future, uh, and we can start there. A lot of times, our uh, people are saying many things about you should do this, you should do that. But you know, this is a start. Just like when I started doing tourism in 2006. So th th those are the foundation, brother. And I'm uh, trying to get people to be involved in something and support something positive. And if they have nothing positive to do, to go find a hobby or something. Uh, but that, yeah. that, those are the, some of the points I picked up uh, from. Uh, uh, with you, yeah, yeah. So my whole thing is, my whole thing is this. Um, what I said was this: uh, there's going to be trials and tribulations. Everything going to be perfect, you know. You know, we're unraveling 500 years of just just disconnecting everything. So when we do this stuff and everything, it's going to be bumps in the roads. It's going to be trial. But the thing is, though, uh, you got to keep pressing on. Yeah, and absolutely, then, without a doubt. And then the main thing is, you know, you are literally progressing from time to time. You know, it's kind of like when I look at where we started in Ghana in 2006. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was like uh, eight of us, uh, uh, December 2006, literally a little bit over 15 years ago. And now we have progressed to where we can see ourselves in the country, living, doing business and having our own business center and having our own community and then being connected to the entire town. And even looking as far as being able to build a beach town, you know, get into like realistically, like brother, real estate development. Right. Like one of the things uh, I show people on our website, AfricaForAfricans.org, is uh, all of what we do as far as tours and investment. Now, an investment black star, you'll see all the legal documents, all the need to know, everything laid out as far as, um, you know, more so than what, you know, you see in any anywhere else. So we letting people know that that's all they have to do is do their research, process it. Um, whatever you hear or someone else tell you, don't let someone else ruin a great opportunity for you because they want to free you propaganda because it's a lot of stuff out there. So the only thing I can tell people to do is to be smart and do research. And then they'll see when you look at Ghana and you look at who is doing development or who is building an organization or who is building a community, it's not a bunch of people you can say. And one of the, the, the group you're going to mention is us. And I've, uh, and I've stand to the test of time, the trials and tribulation. Since I've been in this Pan-African movement in 2003, People have come <coughs> trying to knock me down. There's been all kinds of things. Uh, this is not the first time. It's just when people feel like you're getting a more a little more fame and success, then uh, more more people come out of the woodworks. But for me personally, it's business as usual because all we here do is just build, build great business, and that's it. Uh, so absolutely, brother. Uh, definitely, um, glad you was able to just join us and share. Yeah, all the, uh, wonderful things as far as our uh, infrastructure and how we can really just build together. And black power and uh, black union and straight this African nation building. Yeah, and the whole thing is this: like I said, we got to find out what is an African nation, right? Um, now, I like I said, I can't. We can't. We are obviously can't just uproot white people out of the continent. I mean, that would be great, you know. But we can't do that, right? We can't advocate that because they'll call us racist and everything like that. I, I get that, okay. But at the same time, at the same time, right? 
we're not going to sit there and exalt white people and Indians on the African continent. They have their role, and some of them are doing business and everything. Okay, fine. We're benefiting from the, what they got to offer. Hey, that's fine. You know, I'm willing to compromise. I'm willing to compromise, right? That's one thing, right? But there's some people who think, right, that if we have any sort of racial consciousness as far as Africa, you know, uh, we're being racist or whatever. Let me give you an example. Everybody knows China is the Chinese. You can go there and everything. Europeans live there, everybody live, but you know you're in China, right? You go to Italy, you know that you're around Italians. Yeah, there's a lot of Africans there, okay, you know. You go to Spain, you know it's the land of the Spaniards. You know England, you go to England, whatever, you know. You, the only place in the world where people want to gentrify and basically say this belongs to everybody, they start with this nonsense like, this is the birthplace of humanity. No, it's not. It's a, it's a home of the black people. It ain't a birthplace of humanity. Get the hell out of here. Your, pl your place was birthed in Europe, China, wherever the hell you came from. And so, therefore, the, basically, the whole thing is this. The black man should not have anything for himself. He should not have a homeland for himself. He cannot say, uh, uh, Winston Churchill once said, we have to save Africa from the Africans. We say Africa for the Africans, you know? What I mean by Africa, that's our sign. The number four for Africans, you know? You wanna know what my signs are? Uh, Africa, A, I can't do this on backwards every day. A, four, A. You know, and that's it. Everybody else is just a visitor. They said, where's the African? African is a black man. The bottom line is this, the world, what gets me is this. When I was a kid, tell you a story about uh, what I say about African boy. You know, it's a story, a blog I wrote, I never published it, but I wrote it, right? African boy. In other words, basically when I was a kid, right? And we, my parents moved from South Jamaica, Queens to upstate New York, to the predominantly white area in upstate New York, right? Up until that time period, right, I was well, I was the first kid in my class elementary school to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. And I would basically smack a kid if they didn't stand up faster. I was like, yo, you got to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and everything. I, that was my inner city school was black, white, Puerto Rican, Indian, whatever like that. It was a multiracial school in Queens, right? And basically, I was basically the, the most patriotic kid in the world. When I, I had my silver streak anniversary uh 1976 anniversary train set and everything red white and blue i was at the bison 1976 was a bicentennial year i was so proud of the red white and blue i was an american kid i loved america i sung yankee doodle dandy i sung i saw like that you know when i watched the lone ranger and whatnot you know you know when i watched cowboy movies and everything i watched john wayne i was a kid i was american american that changed when we moved upstate new york okay and the white kids were telling me, you're not American, you're African, right? I said, no, I'm an American. What are you talking about? I'm American just like you are. No, black people. And then that was the year I learned, Roots came out, right? I learned about slavery. I learned that my ancestors did, had another story. We came, I said, my parents, they kept this from me, you know? I was Christian, I was American, right? My parents didn't tell me about slavery and everything, how we were slaves. I said, we were slaves? Because all around me, I saw nothing but black excellence, strong black people. And basically, to learn that my ancestors were beaten with hoses and slaved and whipped. And I saw roots that did psychologically did something to me. You know, psychologically, that did something to me. And so, therefore, I stopped singing Yankee Doodle Dandy. I stopped singing all these Johnny Come Marching Home and stuff like that. The 13 original colonies became the United States. So, by the time I was in sixth grade, right, a couple of years later, right? This America thing was waning on me. So I started learning, uh, uh, okay, I hated being called African. I'm not African, I'm an American, right? So then, then I started reading my encyclopedias and I started running, oh, wow, we got black people, black empires, Mali, and stuff like that. And I started saying, okay, Africa is beautiful. And I started reading, uh, Africa has cities. I, I saw an open encyclopedia, I saw the city of Lagos, saw black people walking around. Uh, driving cars in Africa, and I was like, "Whoa, man, this is cool. We got cities in Africa: Nairobi, Kenya." White. I was like, "Wow." And then um, I, I began being proud of being African. Also, I started saying, "Okay, I'm an African boy," and I started basically, you know, uh, uh, studying like different villages in Ghana and stuff like that, right? 
And I used to give myself an African name. I used to call myself Kolo, which I, I, I changed my name to Kolo anyway, you know? And that was my African uh, uh, part of me, man, Kolo, you know? You know, go get a drum. Go, uh, Daddy wants you to go get a drum, you know? I used to stay like an African. So in other words, basically, when I go down south, my family and everything right there, there was a part of me when I was in the, in the country, right? I would always imagine, I could feel the, my ancestors calling me to the continent. I said, uh, 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 see, well, see women in these elaborate Ghanaian dresses and everything. And I said, these women look so much like the women in my community. And I knew that that that's where I'm from. That's that's what my ancestors were. That's what it was calling me. And so basically, I, you know, you know, Kolo was a warrior. You know, he was a warrior. He was a, a warrior to protect his village. You know, so I so so by the time I was 14, I was like a born again Pan Africanist. You know. I was an African, right? I started reading Malcolm X. I started reading Marcus Garvey. And I started reading all these things and everything. I understood that my future, right, was with the black race. I wasn't absolutely 100% sure, right, because I could not share this with nobody, right? So I kept all this in me. I was around my friends. We were out dating and everything like that, right? But uh, I kept all this in me. I kept all this in me for years, right? And so when I grew up, went to college and everything, I still I kept this in me, right? Every once in a while, right, I bump into an older brother and we start talking and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we start talking about politics and everything. And uh, and I met also my older brother said, yeah, man, I've been in my cousin, my uncle Ronnie. He, he lived in Ghana for years, you know. I used to talk to him and stuff like that, you know. And uh, and uh, some other brothers I met that said, yeah, I've been to the continent and everything like that. It's beautiful over there and everything, right? And so I started being fascinated with one day visiting the continent. And so... um. So I grew up and everything. I did my life. I, I I was out there clubbing and thugging and doing all that stuff like that, you know, but always in me, right? And then uh, in the 90s, right, we, I started this group called the Kala Nation. Kala means, Kala means life force. It means unity. It means nation. It means group. It means togetherness. Kala is like a life force, you know, bring many into one unit. It means unit. It means unity. It means togetherness. That means Kala, right? <laughs> So when you bring all the people together, that's a call, it's a force, right? The keepers, we keep, you know, we keep, we're the keepers of our history, the keepers of our future, you know, it's the collar. And then I said nation, right? I said only a collar nation is going to survive, right? That means we keep all the good things about ourselves, right? Our history and everything, you know, what we went through and everything like that. We don't throw that away. Too many people, even in the Pan-African spaces, right, want to discard their experience in America. No, that's who we are. We cannot erase what happened to us during slavery because going forward in Africa, we always got to be mindful of our ancestors. Uh, there's, 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 we have issues on both sides of the Atlantic, right? There's, there's Africans. Why did Africa allow this to happen for 300 years, right? When we're coming back to Africa, right, we have to reconcile the fact that we were slaves in, that, in America and everything like that and then that we had no help we were on our own. So as we return, right, that 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 thing has to be reconciled. It doesn't mean we place blame. We're saying that this is who we are. We have to respect that. We have to respect the fact that uh, uh, that happened. You know, that Passover happened. The, the Middle Passage happened. You know, that's who we are. We're children of the Middle Passage, and so therefore, when we come to Africa and everything like that. We have to be on a different thing. That's why we need our own space on the continent. You know, that's where me and brother Mamani connect. We need our own state. Ultimately, we need our own state. You know, that's 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 that will solve all the problems. Only 15 percent of the African continent is occupied. If we had one state, not even 5000 square miles, right, as a center state where where the uh, where the where the diaspora would have a state that represents them, whether you are in the United States, Canada, everything, you have one state that operates that represents you on the continent. That's a state where we could put our money, uh, 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 everything in, and everything, and we're connected with all the capitals of the African continent under one area. So that'll be the diaspora state. That has to happen. That's isn't, to me. That's no thing. That would solve ninety percent of the, the the issues right here going forward. Other than other than that, right? Other than that, what we're going through right now in Africa and stuff like that. I see a lot of people going to the continent. Right? They go to countries. They don't do their homework. They basically just go into countries and they say, give me a citizenship, give me land. Don't work like that. You know, well, if somehow there was a disconnect between our ancestors and where we are right now. We always thought that, okay, anytime I can go to Africa, I can go to Africa. We go there and we can't, it's not like that. They want visas and they got laws and they, they got all these things and everything. 
You know, they got all these things in place that doesn't facilitate that because they haven't been educated about who we are. You know, we go to Africa like, oh, I'm African now. No, but you have a U.S. You were born in America. On international law, you are a United States citizen. And so therefore, the, the governments of Africa got to take care of their citizens first. You understand what a nation is, a republic? You got to take care of the people first. Now, how do you become a nation? It has to be written into law. The highest people in the government, right? The highest people in government got to say, okay, we want these African-Americans to come here. And you have to, and it's written into law. So when you touch the ground, you say, look, and then uh, what it has to be is this. You can't have, you can't serve two masters. You got to give up that U.S. passport and become what that country is. So people are able to do that, right? Okay, when you come to that country, right, you come to that country and you say, I'm just going to be a Ghanaian citizen, I'm going to be a Nigerian citizen, everything like that, right? That everything that you're, your 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 liberal everything that you believe in goes away you now got to get with team nigeria if team nigeria says that uh we're pro uh the queen of england guess what you're the pro queen of england if ghana says that the president of ghana says we want more french investment there guess what that's what that's what you're buying into you know the president of this country says uh well, we well this is what we is so when you become a citizen that's what you are you're your pan-Africanism takes a back seat to what the majority of people already have planned. So well, that's, all, that will. that's the way it is. This is the conflict right here. Where a lot of us go to the continent, we want Africans to forget uh, that they have relationships with China, Russia, and all these countries and everything to accommodate our agenda. And they're saying, no, it don't work like that. You know, uh, the British are educating our doctors. They're, they're like this, you know, Germany did this for us and everything. We have a relationship with We have a relationship with Australia. Well, we see all these Australian guys dating Ghanaian girls and everything. Oh, I was like, hey, look, that's the way it is. We have a relationship with them. You have a lot of Sweden people buying villas in Ghana and everything. I heard a guy the other day saying that he had some white Americans in Ghana that were wearing, had rebel flags on their car, you know, uh, or with, uh, hugged up with, uh, laid up with Ghanaian women. You know, that's what you like that. So when we say that, okay, well, we need a state, a place where where our values are reinforced on the continent. We want to be part of this country right here. But in this place right here, it's going to be pan-Africanism, black unity, and, and, and uh, uh, we're going to be together. Right? That's nothing wrong with that. Just like you have the Amish community in America, right? Just inside the United States, but they have their own communities. The Hasidics got their own communities and everything. There's nothing wrong with having a separatist movement inside of an African country. Right? Say, look, this we're we're all about black power here in this community. This is a black power community, a pan-African community. That has that case has to be made. That's what they're fighting against right now. Because if you have the, the uh, these black power community and they're successful in their model community and everything, right? Then what's that going to do to the rest of the uh, uh, region? They're going to say, well, these guys are doing good. They're building homes. They got banks and everything like that. And the bottom line is this: white people stay away from them and everything. And they're and they're like, oh, uh, I see the, the the village over here. Uh, uh, let's take a detour. I don't want to drive by there <laughs> because those are those black people from America. See, the whole thing is this: the white people in Africa have used to when they get off that plane, they feel like uh, I'm in Africa. Let me just run wild. Everybody's gonna cater to them. Everybody's gonna like this. They're the center of the African world. That white skin. And so the, so the bottom line is this. So when you come over there with black power and stuff like that, and you're you know, trying to build something on the blades of black power, that's scary to a lot of people. It's a lot of Negroes, you know, and a lot of Negroes don't want that. They want, uh, they like having white people down there, you know, and uh, uh, white guys out there with uh, African children molesting them and stuff like that. That's, they don't bat her eye with that, you know. But when we go there, you know, we're not going to tolerate that shit. You know, we're not going to tolerate that. And some people say, oh, if you have a problem with uh, see, interracial, but don't go to the continent. I, I, I beg to differ, my brothers. I do have a problem with it. Because the bottom line is, if you're a black man, you uh, remember a couple of years ago, there was a, 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 a black uh, a, a dude from the um, uh, uh, United States. I don't know if he was an immigrant or whatever like that. But he was in Greece taking pictures, just taking pictures with a white girl, right? They didn't know he was American, right? He thought he was an African, right? 
And he was like a, a, a fashion guru. I forgot his name, right? And he was just taking pictures of the thing. And a bunch of boys from Estonia, right, killed him. They beat him to death for taking pictures with a white girl, you know? And they said, oh, we didn't know it was American. We thought they took it because Africans don't, don't understand. When they go to Europe, they just start, oh, chasing white girls. They end up getting killed. They mean Africans are killed in, in Europe for chasing white girls? You know, whereas African-American guys don't really do that. It's your European girls chase African-American guys, you know? But African guys are like, oh, they don't care. They say, oh, they just want to get with, you know, anything. They go around the world. They don't care. And so we uh, we understand what race and stuff like that means. You know, we understand that the only place where a black man is in the in the leg in the between the legs of a black woman. That's the only place you, you that's where your heaven is, son. If that's not your heaven, not with a, a man, not with a white woman, not with anything else, no. What what your heaven is in the in the womb of a black woman. You know, that's a starter right there. That's what we believe in. A black man, black woman, black child, you know. And if you believe in that, that's what we're talking about. And that's not being racist and everything. That's just basically preserving who you are, you know, who you are, you know. And I, nothing against my people who are mixed race and stuff like that, right? You know, there's, sal there's hope and salvation for you. If you're mixed race, your, God, your, your job is to marry back into the black community and get that black blood flowing back into the genetic pool, you know. Can you do that? Can you, can you help us out here? Can you, can you, can you help us out here? No, this idea that, oh, race don't matter and everything. No, no, okay, keep that race don't matter and color matter in America. You know, I don't want to see a bunch of black people running around mixed up in Africa and whatnot, you know. That's what I have. You'll never, you'll never see uh, um, in Europe or any other country where uh, they must have just trying to push it, right, race mixing and stuff like that in their country. Japan has race mixing, but Japan is like 99% Japanese. They're like, oh. A few Japanese have half black kids. That's no big deal. They ain't gonna make no dent on the Japanese. The Japanese are already set. Where well, African culture is so vulnerable. We're not industrial. We're not industrialized society. We don't have the infrastructure, right? So we're very vulnerable right now to our identity, who we are. And it basically, if you let me, let me give you a perfect example. When you you lose your identity of who you are and everything, guess what? You know what you're gonna end up look like? Look at Rio de Je Janeiro. A bunch of kids. Uh, Children uh, of uh, uh, bastard children, mixed race, they don't know who they are and everything. You have white people at the top, right? The mulattoes, everybody else in the middle, and the black people on the bottom. You know, how'd that happen? Because you told them that race don't matter and everything. And so, therefore, you know, the hierarchy is uh, the thing. Yeah, global CTZ says self preservation. Well, without self preservation, you're nothing. If you don't have self-preservation, what the hell are you, you know? What are we doing all this for? We're trying to preserve the black race. You know, that's not being a uh, racist. That's just being reality. Because if we have uh, if we have one thing in common that we're all black and everything, we understand that as hard as it may, uh, it may hurt people's feelings, right? This is a global race war. This is. This is a global race war. You know, a global race war. And the bottom line is this. I wish the white man the best. I wish the white man the best and everything like that. But our race is dying. We're dying. We cannot go another 100 years with no infrastructure of our own. We cannot go no 100 years with our own financial uh, house in order. We cannot go uh, 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 another 100 years uh, 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 being the biggest exporter of human capital. That's what I want to talk about before. Right now, Africa used to supply the world with labor, slavery. Do you know right now one of the biggest export right now in Africa from Africa is what? Labor. Africans by the millions are across the world. 20 million Nigerians live abroad right now as we speak. You know, the best and brightest people are going to other places, right? And the whole thing is when they go over there, they're helping Germany. They're helping France. They're helping all these other countries and everything build up their economies. Because they give you a green card and a uh, stuff like that, an apartment building when that you get online right and you live in places like austria and vienna and places like that and you get online talking about africa every knows that you you always have somebody uh uh who don't like pan-africanism right they call on the show and the bottom line i hate this fact that the fact that pan-africanism talk dominates the african spears right because others say like i said um they have no data, man. I was in Africa, man. Data is hard to come by. It's hard to do a YouTube stream in Africa. I mean, it's expensive, right? 
So we put out this stuff, and Africans uh, go out there and look at stuff like that. You know, they can't get on live, do live streams on the continent for the most part. You know, so we're, we're so all our propaganda through these social networks. Yeah, we got to keep pushing these live streams out there because Africans pick that up and they regurgitate, and we become the narrative. That's why we have Negroes like Negro Pian, right? He wants to stop this. He wants to create another narrative. African Americans are coming over here. He said it. I heard him say it many times. African Americans are mostly criminals and thugs and blah 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 blah. He puts that out there and everything, and so Africans being believing it. I I don't expect anything less, right? But what I am saying is, if I see, if we see, Bamani, all of us see anybody that used to rock with us, agreeing with this Negro pen, I'm telling you right now, bro, you better find another universe to hide over. You're a traitor. If Brother Bamani and myself put you in our in our fold. And you rock with us, or you went on a tour with us, and everything, and now you're rocking with that damn Negro pen. That's unforgivable. See, I'll take you when you're hot, I'll take you when you're cold, but I will not take lukewarm people. So, you better make a choice of which way you're going to rock with this, you know, because we're serious about this. You know, you know I, Negro pen has some good points. No, Negro pen has, has no points. You know, this nigga, all this nigga wants to do is put down in people to try to build himself up. You know, you know, he, uh, he wants to uh, put, uh, build himself up. He wants to uh, build, uh, put doubt in people about everybody else, you know, that they're scamming and scamming and everything. Brother Bomani has been an honorable person since I met him. Brother Bomani once told me uh, what made me. Love this man, Brother Bamani, because he told me, he said, look, I want to see other people get into the, the thing. I don't, I don't want to be the only one out here. Because he knows if you're the only one out here, right, if people get jealous, and you know, that's how we are. We get jealous, and we look for any reason to turn on each other. So if everybody else was out here doing what Bamani does, and he helped Brother Dinas get his uh, uh, tourism thing up, thing, you know, give him pointers. He, he's more than happy to help people that want to get into the tourism business. There's plenty of opportunity in the tourism business. And there's a plenty of opportunity not only to give world-class tours, but to make a lot of money. And that's billions of dollars that we could potential we could be flow upon, uh, uh, falling to the continent. People go over there, stay for seven days and everything on nice hotels and everything. They're putting money into the local economy. They're buying stuff at the markets and everything, you know. They're buying airline tickets. They're they're doing all these things and everything. That's money put, pumping into the continent. Now, if we make that uh, uh, one thing, that's the one thing we can start with. We, we don't have to have a, this don't take a genius to start that. Tourism right here, visiting and traveling to the continent. The African-Americans, get this, spend $83 billion a year on travel. Well, guess where we travel to? We travel to Europe. Oh, we travel to Cancun. Every time you see Negroes cooning in Cancun, you know? I ain't going to knock. Let me just knock it by. If you like Cancun, fine. We go to Costa Rica. We go to Belize, you know? We go to all these places. There. We go to the Philippines. We go to Dubai. We go to all these places and everything, you know? But, man, once, the, once I said, well, remember I said before about love, right? And black love when I, you know? How can you talk about racism and everything if you don't want to experience what it's like to live in a majority black society? If you don't want to experience what it's like to be among people when you get off the plane. That's what me when I went to Africa, right? When I when I get off the plane and the people has running things look like me. And I just felt so at home, man, because they just took such care of me. Like I didn't realize I'm not in America no more. I'm in another land. And this land, they welcome me, you know? Welcome to Liberia, welcome. They didn't say welcome to Liberia, they said welcome home. That's what they told me, welcome home. And man, I want to break down in tears, you know? Break down in tears when somebody told me I was home and I felt like I was home. And I said, yeah, well, you're home now. How long you been home? Me as an African-American, born in America, sending of slaves, told I was nothing my whole life by the world. When somebody tells me I'm home, you got a home, Carla. You know, how could I ever turn my back on that? How could I ever give that up? For what? A country that doesn't respect me, that doesn't respect my culture, don't respect my history, that doesn't do anything like that? I can't. 
So when I see brothers making an honest attempt to connect with the African continent, they're going to make mistakes. We don't have it all figured out. You know, like the people talk about the Bag family, leave the Bag family alone. They're going to make mistakes. But these are people. So the bottom line is this. Bottom line is if you uh, uh, sit there and and uh, bash people for just making an honest attempt to live on the African continent, and, uh, and sometimes things go wrong, sometimes we get into trouble and everything like that, but you're going to de demonize people and then put fear in people that I better walk this chalk line. That's not what Africa is about. Just like anybody, just like an African will make a mistake when he comes to America. Just like uh, we're going to make mistakes when we go to the continent. But so long as we correct our mistakes, right, and then move forward. What these people want to do is, oh, my God, see, it's not going to work out, man. It's, oh, brother, Bamani's this, Bamani's that. Don't send them no money. Uh, 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 uh. And without any evidence, anything, you people believe it. Brother Romani has taken over 400 people to the African continent. World-class tours. Something not done before because most of the tour operators, right, uh, tour operators for the most part are Indians and whites. The Indians got the tour game locked up in Tanzania. You know, they're bringing your black behind over from America to on their tour. They're operating tour, tours and everything. They're making the money. They're making the bag. Same thing with South Africa. We got our brother Mark Blanton, the African American couple, the, the real life, uh, the lifestyles of uh, uh, the real South Africa lifestyles. I met him years ago here in Virginia Beach. Him and his wife. His wife gave up a medical practice, right? These are middle class African Americans. He used to work for a secret service. Middle class African Americans, right? You know, he had trials and bumps in the roads and everything, but they're doing it now. And they're investing in real estate and finance and everything, and doing tours and everything. Him and his wife, lovely wife Latasha Blanton, uh, everything. Uh, basically relocated to South Africa and really built their whole new life over there. That's their country of choice, South Africa. Some people, whatever your country of choice is, it might be Ghana. It might be Botswana. It might be Mozambique. It might be Tanzania. But whatever it is, we're, like I said, I would suggest that people join our social network, the BAL social network, right? And communicate. Let's, 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 let's close ranks, right? Let's not put all our stuff all over the internet. Let's have one place, one social media where we're sharing information, where you could uh, get in touch with Brother Bamani and Kala and all these other people that, that, that were together on the same page. So when people say, oh, the pan rule is failure, no. Nope. Mm -hmm. Go to the BIO social network and whatnot. That's just live and well. You know, we got people going to the Gambia, going to everything like that, doing stuff like that. So when people talk about pan is dead, I don't know what you're talking about. There's record numbers of African Americans visiting the continent, you know. Somebody yeah, said, I, I, we have my question. Didn't you put the link in the chat room? He put the link in the chat room. Just click on the link. What link? Uh, to the stream yard. Oh, Somebody wow. wants to get on and ask a question. You know, I let them. They sure they want to text a question. But uh, yes, uh, let me um let me repost it. You want to come on, ask Bomani or myself a question, come right on, you know. But yes, I, uh, before even I'll post it and um, we'll add them in. But yes, Carla, I appreciate your energy and I appreciate you just breaking it down as we just uh, beat on this uh, topic as far as Black Union and nation building. And, um, and the importance of that is ultimately, you know, the future of our children. We can set this thing up to where, you know, we can... You know, we build our future in Africa. So, again, family, land is the base of independence. We have acquired and paid for 15 acres of land, um, which has 15 plots. It also has a business center on uh, four to five plots and a community center on four to five plots and a nice um, you know, front entrance part. Uh, so that's 15 acres. And then we have uh, 60 acres. That's uh, Half of that is uh, residential. Other half is commercial. And we can literally use the investment from what we have here in America. Because a lot of times we make money here and we end up this, you know, we don't invest it. So it does end up just going. You just, and all you end up having is 
a uh, depreciated vehicle, a depreciated house, and basically this goods uh, or junk or stuff in your house. And, uh, and that's it. And over the period of time, uh, even if it's five to 10 years, you could have uh, gotten land in the community and build a house to where now you go back and then you have your home and then now you have a community to be around of like-minded people. So these are opportunities that we are creating. And I've approached it to the highest organized level. The only thing that I can't control is when people want to just want what they want and then they want to change their minds and then they want you to, to do all kinds of things like uh, give them refunds that's not even what they signed for and things like that. That's when it becomes a little different, the human mind. But then you you know you have a situation where you, you, you're going to have people where they have certain level of mental disorder. I mean, if you think about the high level of mental disorder uh, amongst our people, so based on all the traumatic uh, things that we have gone through as a people beyond anyone else, other people, and then some people have it in their direct uh, common, whether it's their childhood or their adulthood. So, you know, we, we try to deal with people and try to work with people, and it becomes a rough situation. But the worst situation is when you have a private business, <coughs> people put out confidential information it, and, and, and makes you vulnerable and things like that. And that's when it's a little bit rough now. That's kind of like, you know, okay, the gloves are off and things like that. So whether you are, uh, you know, old lady or a young guy or whatever it is, you know, it's what it is. We we can't let people infiltrate and destroy the Pan-African movement. And we're building an operation to where it's going to benefit us as a people to where we have representation on African continent. Because let's be honest, we don't have the proper, Afri the proper African diaspora representation on the continent. It's just something that does not exist and things like that. And, you know, I'm always talking about when things go wrong for someone, like if you know one of our brothers went to you know, Ghana and things went wrong for him, there's only so many avenues you can turn to. He's very limited you know, for the most part. You know, you can always go to the American embassy and say and ask you know, you know and, and and tell your government that you are you know you're a patriot and tell them that you know you just ran into some bad things and they'll get you a plane ticket and they'll get you scheduled for you know to to stay whether it's a homeless shelter or somewhere. They'll at least work that out for you. But is that what you want? No. What you want is to be living amongst your brothers and sisters and working. So all that land that we have, brother, it's a lot of work. A lot of work where people can literally join us and there's a lot to do. We can work on many uh, you know, negotiations and deals and things like that, especially with that new 60 acres that we have. Uh, and then also the other uh, aspect of what we're looking to do is, you know, you know, people have been to these, uh, these beach towns that are popular. I'll just name a few that's up, up top of my head. Panama City Beach, uh, Florida, Myrtle Beach, uh, um, Carolina, um, you know, uh, Miami Beach, uh, Florida, you know, just to name a few. And these are all beach towns. Even when you think about um, beautiful beach towns, whether it's in Puta Cana or whether it's in Negril, Jamaica, you know, it's all basically rich. Other people dominated it and, you know, and have all these investments. Uh, so, what you know, I saw that uh, we can do is you know, we can acquire beach uh, property and invest in it and put our money together and invest in different aspects of it from resorts, shops, uh, entertainment, you know, the, the usual things around beach town, but we have it as black ownership. And uh, so you, you, you're flipping the corporate economics. And that's why you always got to get that um, you know, the Dr. Amos Wilson book and things like that. And even so, as we, you know, brother, Bo, brother, Bonnie, somebody in the chat room said, where's the 60 acres? What are you going to do on them? Why don't you call in? You know, I mean, this is what I'm talking about, how black people are. We're not going to bite you through the screen. Call. Yeah, in absolutely. Push, you know? and I'm, I'm going to put up a screen sharing of it. Yeah. You know, say also what was clear is. When you do this investment, we said that you know there's no money back. It's like an invest. We got to hold the property, right? There's no yeah, money. It back. Does have, it does have um, a refund policy on there, but it a refund policy. policy it right? takes. Um, yeah, and I don't like to just read off certain things off. So I just usually give people information to read off. But uh, what I'm doing is I'm about to pop up screen share in. All right, and Chrome tab here. So on our website, africaforafricans.org, once you're on there, you'll click on Black Star Pan-African Community on the main menu. And then the second 
article is site map, land survey, and GPS location. All right, and let me just, well, before I even do that. All right, so we have um, an answer to the overview of, um, of phase two. Uh, so you're basically building all of the other social buildings that you'd want to have in your community, education, training, maintenance, medical, community store, um, uh, also, uh, you want to have a um, commercial property for those who want to just build a business and things like that. So just like you have this 15-acre uh, layout, I am still working on finalizing 60-acre layout. All right, uh, kind of this. You, I thought somebody else joined. So yeah, so uh, the per, the link was posted. So all right, so that should be it right there. <clears throat> so that is it right there uh, for all three phase and our vision. Uh, right there on our website. So one of the people that uh, most of what um, it is in the same area, where is the 60 acres? What are you doing on them? Half of it is residential. That's the main thing. So for those who <coughs> one more residential plots, at least 30 acres uh, of it will be residential. So you're looking at additional about 120 different plots, right? And I'm going to read off the details of it. All right, so phase two will include uh, 240 plots on 60 acres for residential and business project. This will include 30 plots for farming, 120 for residential, 24 for apartments slash condos, 24 uh, for on-site commercial investments, uh, four for community store, four for medical center, four for education slash training building, uh, four for maintenance of facility, eight for additional community and business center, and so on. And uh, more phase will be added as we progress. So the phase three vision while we added uh, of a beach town and industrial park. The, the third phase of commercial is commercial and residential. This includes uh, industrial development, land and beach property to build a beach town. The industrial part would have lot, lots of land uh, for us to get uh, companies who want to build small or big industrial development project. The beach town vision will have resort shop, bars, restaurant, entertainment, water sports, physical sport, full environment of culture, um, and many other wonderful things. These are uh, plans that we are working towards and putting things in place to make them uh, attainable. Black Star Pan African community will run as a conglomerate so we can become a community of business investors and manager. So trying to get us to more more than this um this acquire land, trying to get us to put our energy together where we can literally just, you know, you're flipping your investments and you're making it to where you're building a future. Because a lot of times we start certain business and what we do, we sell out to the white people or sell out to the other folks. And then we kill the generational wealth or and the generational yeah. progress. So that's what we're looking to do. We're looking to do that on African content. And also, if we wanted to do black ownership, we know sometimes we're limited here because people give us hell, whether it's a code violation or whether uh, you know domestic terrorists is destroying your, your 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 stuff or causing you chaos and things like that. So we're in a community where we have land by a chief called Nana Haiti, uh, which is a very honorable man. He's also in the, the, the legal world as a magistrate. Uh, so he's an honorable man and he's not gonna destroy his career. That's like, I'm not gonna destroy my career to get into no fraudulent business. That's one of the things that we vowed and we explained to people from the beginning. And we always keep on repeating that because somehow our people sometimes don't get it. That right, it, 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 let me say something. Okay. Somebody text in the chat. Guys, five acres. Do you understand how big five acres is? Five acres per person. Are you crazy? You know, five acres, that's 10 lots, you know? But so a lot. Uh, yeah, that's about that's about um twenty uh twenty five lots. About twenty lots. Uh, you know? We're not um uh we're not selling um lots like that uh 
but yes, uh, ex ex excuse me. Yes, you are selling uh, lots like that that size. As far as in the phase two, say example, if you want to build an apartment complex and you just wanted that land, and you want, you know, we're basically working the deal and we're you know signing in good faith that you're about your business and everything. It's just you know, it's something that we haven't worked out to where we can simply do it. Uh, but it's a situation where people have to apply for membership, and we want people to, you know, because it's it's land that we're you know we're responsible for. Uh, so. Uh, we have that sequence, but yeah, we can work certain things out. Like once we get the things negotiated on the beach and people want to get beach access to it, they want to build a resort or want to build any of those projects we talk about. And I, it's you know, it's open as long as they come with the right heart and understand that we're building the town and we're also investing back in the town. So you no, know, we're not going to be paying people slave wager and things like that. We want to build to where, you know, if we're, if we're building, you know, um, if you're building a... Um, uh, an enterprise to where you want to see that whole town grow and you want to, you know, it's kind of like your property value or even at one point where you had a, a majority of industrial jobs in basically the Midwest, I'm not going to say Detroit, but basically the Midwest. And what did that do to the, uh, the economy of the people live around it? It boomed, right? Mm -hmm. People live a better quality of life and they're able to invest and do certain things. Um, it didn't. Uh, it didn't. Unfortunately, it didn't last too long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When they when they shipped all the dust parts down to Mexico. You know? Exactly. So that's why you have to always reinvest your money in different things, and that's what I've learned from being a businessman and just you know and you know flip my my naval money to to, to something else and something else and something else and you know from one business to the next and so on. Uh, so we have to also diversify our portfolio as far as investment. It's a different aspect of investment. And different aspects dealing with uh, nation building and you know basically black power, <coughs> right? Uh, and so that's why I've been one of the people who, you know in my mid twenties that decided I'm going to start a business and you know and, and 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 you know even before that realized that I had to learn a lot about technology and business. So I got you know I got a bookshelf back there, um, you know a stack of books you know and the bottom part is filled with both business and technology books. And I'm telling people you don't have to be you know whether you think you're a genius or not. All it is about studying. You know, when I was in the Navy and I was, you know, it was a bunch of us, 18, 19 years old in boot camp and things like that. And, you know, you, you have to think uh, all them people are just not going to make that system, you know, uh, or, or be ready re ready for it. Or how do you get a bunch of 18, 19 years old to be out there in a professional world as a military in 2021 and be able to just do the things to, to run that operation, which is, it, it has to take some serious, you now people call it brainwashing. That's fun. I always laugh when people say, I say, that's funny. I was like, it's called training. <laughs> yeah, training, you know. It's a difference. <laughs> the people, like, a, black, a lot of black people, they'll, they'll when it comes to, let me tell you something about Negroes, right? Let me tell you Negroes, right? When training they, and discipline and things like that. that it, discipline, you know? they'll give the discipline to the white man. They'll give 30 years of discipline to the white man. <laughs> it comes to the black man, ah, oh, my mind can't tell me nothing. You know what I'm saying? Collie ain't telling me nothing and whatnot, you know? You know what I'm saying? So, so instead of you coming on board and saying, yo, look, this is what we need you to do. Boom, boom, boom. Can you do it? Well, blah, blah, blah. No, look, when a white man is, is uh, telling you to do something, you won't say nothing. You say, yes, boss, and you do it. You know? <laughs> exactly. They're, they're trained properly when it comes to the white white folks. And that's yeah. what, so, you know, so what we're trying to get people to do is that we're trying to educate our own people to have an allegiance to black power and na nation building and allegiance to this organization and leadership. And that's what we have a, as our project as a Black Star Pan African community, having to really just build a foundation on that, um, you know, on that community setup to where we can just be the forefront of this connecting into that community. And we have representation there because we have an office there, there across from our land, which is incredible. You know, mm -hmm. we're, you know I, I, like so. I like this. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. we're going to put, you know, we're going to add the furnitures and add certain things to them. We also have a secretary, we have other people, security and other people that will be there. But it's like, you know, you're building that foundation and it's not simple to build it. What doesn't help, brother, is backstabbing and people just coming at you. But but I, I realized, but I didn't, I didn't realize before that, you know, when you literally, you know, you literally make it seem like it's just easy doing some of the things that we do. We just, like, you know, you just click on my, my YouTube channel and you just see us in this country, that country. And it's kind of like, where's Bomani and it's, it's cool, our crew at? And people just wonder how you guys do it. And, you know, it's like... You, you're telling people it's like, you know, first of all, we focus on positive energy and actually put the work into things. 
You know, like I can't be a black man, get up every day and sit around and talk about a bunch of people. That's a waste of my energy. I got business people here to, 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 to connect with me yeah. around, got a child to take care of and got, you know, people depend on us, you know, to provide information and provide leadership. You know, I have people here in the U.S. and people there in Ghana as we've been on. I'm literally operating a movement, brother. It's incredible from here in this office here in Georgia to the office that we have there in Ghana. Uh, myself here and then our, our first vice president uh, there and then um, from tour guides, assistants and other people that we have around the country. So we're telling people, I, I'm, I'm open to share the knowledge and, and, and share it, but you got to put the work in to get the money and everything. You know, but coming at me and bashing me and trying to think you're going to do this and take away my glory is not going to happen because most of the people that I do business with, brother, I'm being honest with you, are people I have a long relationship with. People right. like, hey, I met Bomani in 2007. And, you know, or I met Bomani in 2009, 2012 and things like that. And so some people think that they can just come out and say whatever about me and people don't believe it. I have people, while you're talking about people, I have people coming to my house here. We're sitting down, breaking bread, connecting. Because we're working on from your, your house plan to build your house there in Ghana, your business plan. We're working on things to make a movement work. Like literally, you're talking about a network that can help you move from here. In America, can you arrange for people to bring, to, to organize this stuff, put it on shipping containers, and send it to your, your temporary house, which you know, which could even be the, the where we have our office at, and um, and and get it sent there uh, from you know from Accra, their Accra headquarters to get it sent there, and you can just get your stuff all set up, including working your 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 your, you know, your process for your your visa, your residency, which is very important. Then also your, your land papers, which is your, your land survey and your deed of assignment. And literally just getting you to set up there to where you're connected to a group of people and a network of people that's going to help you. And that's literally what we did for one couple that joined us in December of 2019. And I remember them telling us that they're going to move to Ghana and do all this stuff. It was unbelievable. But I appreciate their loyalty because December 2021, we visit their home and the home was finished. They're there chilling. They enjoy it. And it's and I'm telling people that's like a two year window, brother. That's yeah. Did you did you do a video with them? Did you, did you do a video with them with their home? Oh uh, yes, know? I have a few videos of them uh, on our Black Star uh, playlist on the YouTube channel. So I yeah, put it on the poor YouTube channel. Is so 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 Negro P and all those minions to come in and say no. I, no, I mean it's there, brother. Like I'm always telling people, all of our documentation from our website and YouTube page is on there. It's just. Someone will hear somebody say something and they'll take it face value. They won't do any research because they don't want to know. They just want to just carry on their foolishness. But And I understand that. And, uh, and that's what I'm always telling people. If you're going to get into this kind of movement, understand it's what it is. Uh, these things are coming at you. But, you know, but then that's why I said I spend the majority of my time in this business to build a relationship with a lot of people. So those are the people that are customers and those are the people who refer people. So very small percentage of our people come from outside of our network. Yeah. You know, so and that, anybody and who feel like they're outside of our network, that's yeah. all you're destroying. And that's right. very impossible because unless there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of ignorant people who just maybe take something for face value and say they saw something, you're going to see certain things. I'm a very progressive person and I've been that way since I was very young. I got a chance to come to America at 11. And, you know, when, when you, at that time, you just like you're thankful and you're excited and you took advantage of the opportunity mm -hmm. and made the best of it. And now I've seen an opportunity for us to invest in Africa and I won't let no one get in our way. And we have a group of 50 people. You know how hard it is to, to even get five black people to come together to even give you a yeah, dollar? Yeah, a lot. You know, have we, have, we had a whole lot more than that. But people, people change their minds and, and things like that. And people, other people cause distraction and feed information and things like that. But, but literally 50 people. And then we have, you know, so that alone right there and things like that, you know, it's a great organized aspect. Uh, so, and then you see the site, it's been up since 2007 and we have taken over 500 people to the African continent, you know, and, and so on. And many Five, other countries. 500 people. Go yeah, black people. Of an African country, uh, African continent uh, to, throughout um, several different countries. Yeah, and so 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 gets me is this a lot of organization and a lot of work and a lot of coordinating and a lot of trust and then you having to have the right people in the countries to work and get things done or else you'll be sending money to people and people scamming you and things like that. 
So those things don't happen because, you know, more so, you know, more so our people are good people. And if you build relationship right. with people, it will be, you know, you work things out. It's just unfortunate you do have people who stab you in the back and betray your organization. Right. But when those things happen, I tell everybody to stand strong because there's only so many lies and so many things that they can put out. Because after a while, they're just gonna wear themselves out, and while they wear themselves yeah, out, they could, they, they could talk all they want. Your work speaks for itself, you know. Five hundred yeah, people exactly, to the African continent it speaks for itself, you know. Five hundred people to the African continent, and the whole thing is, you have all these people say, "Yeah, man, if you uh, uh, a Pan Africanist gave me the best tour of my life, man. I had a good time in Tanzania, and people always say, yeah, this I, I had a good time, brother. My, we had a ball, man. People too talk." My brother, uh, Chief X, Chief X went on your tour, you know? Oh, he yeah, went, absolutely. Yeah, he wanted to, he had a, yo, that, that, yo, he didn't want to come back, man. I said, I, I told him, I said, man, you having too much fun over there, man, Chief. You got to come back here, bro. You know, he had a ball, man. He saw your advertisement and said, yeah, I'm going to do this thing, man. And he had a ball, man. Chief X, yeah, and that's another person, uh, Bamani, you want to bring on the show and say, yo, yo uh, testimonies. How, how'd you like a Bamani? tours and everything like that. Yeah, you know, Bamani paid his dues, you know, with his tours and, and stuff like that. He delivered, you know. Yeah. People came out. I sent Chief X uh, one of Bamani's flyers, right? And uh, next thing I know, man, uh, uh, I hear from him for like a week. Next thing you know, he, he he's broadcasting from Ghana. He having a good time, bro. He said, yeah, I'm having a ball over here, man. I said, Chief, he went on the tour, you know. He went on the tour. He put his faith in what Bamani was saying, he took a chance, went over there, had a blast, man. He loved Kamasi. You know, he was like having a ball. He said, man, he was like, man, that's my second home, man. I can't wait to go back and everything like that, you know. And that changed his whole outlook in life, man. You know, you gave, you know, so the bottom line, the uh, uh, bottom line is this. Those who know Brother Bamani appreciate what he did, his tours, his uh, investments and everything like that. So when somebody tells, somebody gets up here and, and then blatantly says, but mine is a cr criminal and, a, and the world, and a, the, he's going to be extradited, the guy, all this kind of stupid stuff. Stop listening to these fools online, you know? Stop listening to these fools online. They don't know what they're talking about. They're liars. You know, liars. They think we're going to just going to roll over and back off and, oh, yeah, well, maybe we should. No, we're not going to stop anything. This is just the beginning. You think, you, you think. If you're mad now what we're doing, you ain't you ain't seen it, not a damn thing yet. And so all we're just saying is those of you roll with us and when you know better and you still go with some fool up there hugged up with a porn star and and uh in Europe and whatnot, putting out uh, all he does is trash people all day and all night. But he know he made a mistake with Bamani. That's that's why he's a I got finally got I finally got it. He won't rest. <laughs> Because I told I told that nigga, I said, you don't fuck with the wrong person, man. I said, you mm -hmm. fuck with the wrong person. I said, like, I didn't know. See, the thing with me was, I didn't know about bags. He made me, he even had me hating the bag family. He had me hate, hate me, yes. Yeah, so then I'm looking at it now. Why did I hate these people? I'm listening to this nigga, you know? I hate him, but I still, like this, you know? And then when he came for Brother Bamani, I said, uh-uh. You know, I said, I don't know about these other people or whatever like that, right? I know about Brother Bamani. You know, and so he tried his best and everything like that. You know, he tried his best, tried, shot his shot and everything. Then he backed off. Right. And then he basically like, OK, I finally got it. He found something. Thirty five hundred dollars. He skipped. Yeah, look, Brother Bamani got thirty five hundred dollars in his shirt pocket. You know, you know, so the bottom line, he has nothing. Now he's trying to say, oh, it's going to be big. Dude, whoever's feeding him this stuff. Right. This guy doesn't have any uh, investigated. He has nobody really on the ground. He has secondhand information and he puts it out there. He's not a journalist. He's a gossiper. You know, and then he doesn't retract it. And how do I know this? Because he says shit about me. He says shit I said that I never said. He said he did a whole video about collagenesis. Collagenesis believes he's superior to Africa, that we should rule over Africa. I never said that. <laughs> I said, I said what was the, how are you going to put words in my mouth and tell me what I said? I said, I, he's so convincing. I said, maybe I did say that. You know, maybe I did say that. I said, wait a minute, I ain't never said that. But he's such a liar. See, you don't expect people to outright lie. That's the whole thing. No one expects somebody to outright lie, right? When somebody outright tells a lie, you got to say to yourself, maybe I did do that, you know? And it's a lie because you, because most people are truthful. Most people in the world are truthful, and so therefore, when they hear a lie, right, they're like, "Yo, why would you be saying that? You, you believe it because 
you automatically in your heart and heart and heart you believe that someone will be telling you something that wasn't the truth but it's in order for you to lie like that and tell the old uh, old white a big i would call white lies little white lies i call white the big nasty evil white big white lies right and uh, i call it little black lies you know he told a big white lie about everything right and so basically you basically uh sit back and believe it because you're like why would he lie well and then it goes back to who this guy is right for what we're hearing about this guy uh is a criminal he was a criminal in america you don't just get deported from america folks now you, tell you, I, I, no, you don't just get a port deport you know what it takes to de get deported from america you got to be a low life you mean you have no job you game in the system and he he did jail time in america right for I, I, for different things I'm talking about the unapologetically Negro coon he did jail time in America right and allegedly I don't, I, I'm not sure because I don't have the evidence but I heard this from several sources that he did uh, two jail times five year and a seven year sentence in America right and then he got deported you know the guy's a career scammer criminal and everything and the fact that he this is what he deals with now if he was really serious about Africa right you notice that he's never ever once talked about Europeans who, who do sex tours and pedophile tours on the guy. He never mentioned that. He doesn't talk about the Chinese who are legally uh, uh, raping Ghana right now, gold and everything like that, right? And basically impregnating African women. Oh, he doesn't talk about that. Everything in his mouth is about other black people who are doing work because he's jealous. He can't do it. He probably couldn't even get a visa to go to Africa. He probably has an extensive criminal record. He hasn't been shown you any part of the continent. He doesn't have anything. He doesn't show you what he does for a living. He lives in Europe under what sister's country. Vienna has a generous welfare system. He's living on welfare, the state and everything. He got some side hustle business he's doing online that he wants to go. And he's frustrated that nobody's clicking on his website and joining him. So hey, he Kala, Kala, are you saying that uh, Negro PM got no job? He got no job. He nigga <laughs> living. Yeah, look all the time he has on his hand. You know, look all the time. Like, who has time to sit there? Uh, there's another day in paradise. So when I start the video, you know, <laughs> you see, I'm busy all the time. The only time you ever see me on YouTube. I got work to do, man. I got I'm, work to do. I'm I'm a show once a week, right? I may go on Brandon's show if I got time in the afternoon, but that's it. You know, tonight, me and Dinah, Dinah's, I guess Dinah's out. The weather's probably warm down there in Georgia. So yeah. Dinah's took a night off one night. He's been dodging me all day, you know? So I say, okay, brother, my, <laughs> let's give him brother my, my, we got shit to do, you know? Everybody got shit to do. But Negro P ain't got no life. He has nothing to do. That yeah, nigga brother, is I've never seen someone come after come after like for people who believe this person. I mean, literally, like like all of my friends that's in, in the movement of the repatriation that I know. Like I looked up one day, I was like, why is this guy making videos of all my people? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and yo, I scope on this reading all this, but what people do is the the disgruntled people in your organization. And the people who just don't like you for whatever reason, they literally, it's kind of like people who just, your neighbors who don't like you, they always call the police on you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's what it is. That's what it is, Milani, right? You know, you got that neighbor right That's because, that's that's because, because they, put, they, they pull up and they, they got, you know, they, they, they pull up and they see you living good and, and life and things like that. But it just becomes that level of crab in the barrel mentality and hatred and jealousy where people do that. And it's just, that's not, there's other people out there. But most of them are just very small fry. But you know, Jake built a business this, this, of this thing, ruining people's name. Right. Jake this is what we have to do, right? The the old style Negro, right, who just believe in peace, love, and black power, that Negro is not gonna survive in the future, right? <laughs> you need Negro people like me and Bamani that'll get in your ass, you know, because we understand the nature of our people, right? Sometimes our people need a foot up the ass, you know. <laughs> We understand that the white man can't get to us unless they go through you first. You know, that's what it is, you know, and they're doing. And, I, and how do I know this? There are white people who are basically trolling these black social networks, like pretending to be Nigerian, this in black America, this is black. America. They, they had nothing to do. For, for example, Bamani, a couple of years ago. Right. Uh, there was a, 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 a social site called Topics. You ever remember Topics? I don't know if they're still around anymore, but Topics. Uh, no. Oh, it was topic. It was like it went viral, but they had a huge Pan African site like that. Where, but this was back in 2010, right? Black people, African Americans, go back and forth. Liberians had their own group. They're going back and forth against America, like that, like that. But anyway, this one group thing. This was showed me what was going on, right? This one uh, uh, topic that came out said, 
I'm a, a, a girl from Senegal, and my, my father told me never to get with an African American man because they're all drug dealers. They said everybody just went viral. Oh, what the hell are you talking about? Right? Come to find out, some fat guy in his uh, drawers pretending to be an African girl dissing African American men. You know, that's what you have out there. I said, why are these motherfuckers come in our spaces? Oh, yeah, that's why I said we created this. I created a social network, the BL social network, right? Because I could vet people. Oh, I'm the BAO. Oh, I don't know who you are because you got to be black to be in the BAO social network. That's the first thing we ask you. So the bottom line is this. So so I'm like this. I don't do business. Somebody come at me right now. Oh, I heard about you. No. Have you been in our social network? Have I known you for years? No. Then you get to the back of the line. That's the way I am. And you have to respect that. I don't respect people just coming out of nowhere talking about, oh, yeah. Why? Because uh, uh, sooner or later, right, you, you're going to have a falling out with me. And next thing you know, you're going to be saying, Kyle ain't shit, Kyle ain't shit. I got motherfuckers online, man. I be saying, I said, man, I don't even know myself. Yeah, Kyle, man, he said this. When I, I don't even know half these people. You know, I mean, when Negro P did that video about me, the comment section was like 500 deep, uh, Bamani. I said, who are these people? Yeah, call it this, call it that. I'm like, I don't even know. <laughs> these niggas never talked to me on the phone. They never been with me. They just know uh, Negro P put this out there, call us this, right? And people ran with it. You know, people are like, Kyle ain't shit, man. Fuck him, man. Blah, 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 you know? And so so the bottom line, that's that's the, uh, that's the way it is, man. People out there just uh, 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 love the gossip, you know? This ain't a gossip thing. You know, we put it out there, right? If you want to know the truth about me, you, you go to the social, BAO social network. You want to know about Bomani's network, you visit his website and everything, and you contact him by information, and you find out the truth. But the whole thing is this. We're going to keep going on. So if you think you have some little victory, you think you're winning and uh, we're just going to roll over and and uh, to the Negro PM. Every time somebody has a beef with one of us, we're not, the first person they run to is Negro PM. You know, ah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm calling me. I don't like what you said, man. I'm going you, you, to you gonna get it. I said, what? I'm going to report you to the Negro PM. I'm like, Look, oh, I'm scared. The Negro PM. You're going to report me to the Negro PM. You know, and so, and so so the bottom line is this, and we never had anybody in the movement like this. Like we had a lot of disagreements back and forth, right? But we never had anybody create a platform with the sole purpose of trying to discredit people. You know, spread people. If you have a problem with somebody, right, right, you have a problem with somebody, what somebody's doing, you can get in touch with them and talk to them and say, hey, well, I, I, I like that. But the first thing you do is get online. Oh, I got some news about such and such. Did you talk to him? Did you clarify that, right? Did you verify what you're saying and everything before you put it out there? Because people that listen to you, right, they're going to believe it whether they want it or not, you know, what or not, you know. So it's just, a, it's just a real sick world we live in. And I don't know why people think we're just going to roll over. We're not these old school. I'm the, look, let me tell you something. I'm not one of these loving ass Pan-Africanists, right? I don't call everybody family and all stuff like that, right? I don't know you. You don't know me. You know what I'm about, right? And we're about the same thing. We can work together. Right. People think because I say, well, black, we work together, that that means that you're going to take advantage of me or you're going to uh, you, you're, I'm a sucker. I'm a fool. And too many people think Pan-Africanists or black power people are fools. You know, and that's why we get taken advantage of. People think we're soft. They think we're fools. We're gullible and everything. We don't have to be like that. Right. Because we know we got something that people want. We're trying to build. We're building infrastructure. You know, we're producing tangible results. And we start producing tangible results and everything like that. You know, if you want tangible stuff and everything, then we're the place to do it. No longer is a Pan-Africanist is a guy sitting on the street corner with no education and nothing, uh, all dusty and bummy and everything. We got Pan-African like myself and Bamani that accomplish in life, accomplish our personal lives and everything, who can do this thing. And we got people like Dinah Samir, brother of Brandon, Pan-African strike back that do this stuff, you know, for a living and do this stuff for in real life and everything. So we got people... That could how hold debate anybody on this on this topic, and that's what they're not used to. They're used to being Pan Africans, being oh, you're Pan Africans because oh, you failed in America and everything. No, we all got successful careers and lives in America, you know. But what draws us to this, right? We can go. We, we if we were, it was about money, Dinah. I mean, uh, uh, my tell me, if it was just about money, couldn't we make more money in America or Canada, Mexico, or anything like that? It's not about the money all the time. Brother, I'd have continued my aviation career and put myself in 
a wonderful position with an incredible salary and things like that. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, we have to build something for our people. And, you know, and that's the thing that I realized when I was transitioning out the U.S. Navy after four and a half years. It's like, you know, it's a great ride, but, you know, we can't commit ourselves to just serving others. We have to build something for our family and things like that. And I thought about my family in America and I thought about my family in Jamaica and things like that. So here we are now. We're in a good position. We have a land and we can build a whole town. And we can, yeah. you know, and we, you know, we and just like that, and we can just start building generational wealth just like that, just by making those kind of moves. But if yeah, you at least want to work thirty or forty years yeah. on a plantation and giving all the money back, we'd never gotten anywhere. We'd be stuck in that same cycle of people from generation to generation. It's kind of like having a, a family on welfare from generation to generation. Generation to generation. This, bro, we work in America. And the next. Go back. Black America generates almost two trillion dollars. It goes back right. into what if we've taken that money and putting it into our own areas and territory and stuff like that, our own banks, our own finance companies and everything, like right? money circulating among ourselves and everything. That's what it's all about. You know, if you're against that, I don't I, I don't know what to tell you, you know. And I can't wait till we have our own what what needs to happen is the African American diaspora, we need to have our own banks on the continent, you know. We need to be able to transfer money into the onto the continent, you know, and so that has to happen. We have uh, that's the one thing we have in mass. We have one or two black blanks that combine now; they merge together and form a billion dollar entity. Okay, get the bag in America, right, and start yeah. opening up, on the continent, you know, get the bag in America, right. Open mm -hmm. up mortgage companies, finance companies, whatnot. It's all about the money flow, you know. The money has been leaving the black race for five hundred years. They drain us from our labor. Our labor produces money, wealth. And capital, you know, and the bulk thing is everything floats up, nothing floats up. The bulk thing, like it's a pyramid, it's all a pyramid thing. Uh, money floats up, shit floats down, you know. We've been getting shitted on because we're at the bottom of the shit, you know. But we got to get it so where the money's floating up and you know, us or whatnot, and we can shit on somebody else, you know. So the bottom line is we have to have our own money flow, and you can't have a money flow without land, you have to have a place. You know, we have to have our place. We have our own, you know, on the on the on the land that we're building in Ghana. Have our own clinics, our hospital, our own healthcare system. You know, our own everything, our own fire department, our own medical our stuff like that. You know, our own community relationships board and stuff like that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Go and ham. Yes, yes. Uh, greetings, brother. Go ham. Can you hear me? Peace, peace, and black power to you. Yes, good brother, man. I always appreciate your love and support, and I'm always telling people that this is uh, one brother that uh, when I'm in a journey with us, somehow you have a feedback. I do. I uh, I don't seem like you do anymore. Oh, now you're on mute, so um, nothing is there. All right, he's reloading back in, and yes, family, that is a good brother, Goham, and he's gonna share with you. About Sierra Leone, just like Kala share with you about Liberia, and we're sharing with you about Ghana. So, family, this is a network of brothers that are connecting you into an incredible world that uh, you know we've never seen. You know, changing the scope of the repatriation movement. Uh, Go ham, can you hear us? All right, but uh. Uh, Kala, unmute yourself and continue. And yeah, he, got, he, got, he, got, he probably muted himself, you know. And while I'm thinking about it, folks, if you want to join this, the BAO, join our social network. I'll put the link in the chat room. Also, we have an app, a social network app, uh, BAO Global Pipeline, Global Pipeline, on your app store, you know, join our social network, BAO Global Pipeline, you know, that's our social network. You join and you see a lot of articles on Bomani, and he's in there. He has a group. You can create your own group. It's like Facebook, you know. You can create your own group, you know, network with other people, friend request people, and stuff like that. We have different groups, uh, different chapters of each country. We have a Sierra Leone chapter. We have a Liberia chapter. We have a Liberia, the biggest chapter right now is the Liberia chapter. We have a Ghana chapter. We have an Angola chapter. chapter. We have a South Africa chapter. We have every we have chapters for each state. So get in there, join with people, uh, inbox people in your local state, join the BAL social network and everything. It's a place of 
different organizations linked together. You know, it's a point for all organizations linked together under one platform. That's what makes us so invincible. You know, you got Bomani's group in there. You got uh, uh, Pan African Strikes Back group in there. Uh, Dynasty group in there. You got all different types of groups and stuff like that. You can create your own group. You know, you can create your own blog page, a free blog. You can create your own blogs, your blogs out there from our social network. So basically, it's a free social network. It's getting off Facebook. You know, we don't need Facebook. You know. Okay, okay you're not registered. Okay. Uh, you got to register for the, you got to, uh, when you download the app, right? You got to still got to join the website with your email address. Yeah, you're not registered. You got to register. You got still got to register. You still got to register with the app. You still, after you join the app, uh, join the site, you got to sign in. You got to first join the app, uh, join the thing, register, right? And the app will pop up right with the, when, once you're registered, the app and, it's, and, the, uh, and the social network will, will sync together. So, 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 so therefore that's what we're push, pushing. And the bottom line is you go there, you, you join the social network, feel at home, post, uh, uh, join the forum. That forum is hot. T any topic you want to and everything like that. You can share uh, your forum uh, uh, posts on Facebook, uh, WhatsApp, uh, Telegram, anything like that, you know. So it's a ground zero place where we can get together and uh, share ideas. You know, that's what it's for. It's a, it's, it's a forum where different groups and everything, you know, you know, yeah, yeah, so, re yeah, register, yeah, once you register on the, the, the site and everything like that, and, uh, the app, the app and thing will, will sync together, you know, so that's basically your, uh, 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 your, it's your side, so I don't, you know, this, this is for us, people who are Pan-African, you believe that you're Black African, you're African American, Jamaican, whatever like that, this is a place for Black power and black unity, you know, none of this stupid ADOS FBA shit, you know. So uh, the app is uh, BAIO Global Pipeline on your Android or Apple, you know, Pipeline. Just Google that on your, just search for that on your Android or your Apple, and you'll be right there. You know, you could, uh, you could, uh, or just go to the website, which is www, and register. And then you can download the app, and it'll sync together. Hold up. Or you can go to www.baioafrikstan, the number five, dot ning, dot com. You go to either one. You go to the, the, the website and register. And then you download the app. Once you uh, have the website registered and everything like that, they ask you a couple of questions, and I'll approve it. And then I'll, I'll approve it. And then you go to the um, app store, download the app. So you have the app one thing. You know, if you can, uh, move your app, do the BL app to your front page of your app. So when you open your phone, that's the first thing you see. And in the future, man, I, like I said, we I want everybody to de delete Facebook, delete all this stuff like this. You know, and so we have our own platforms and everything. And so one platform that we can morph into that we don't have to deal with all the stuff like that. We, we're communicating with each other. But mine put his, what he's doing up there. You go there, you'll see what we're doing in Liberia. And whoever wants to uh, take over the Sierra Leone chapter, uh, you, you Sierra Leone, just uh, get in the Sierra Leone chapter. If you want to be an administrator, we'll approve you for administration. And everything, you can put your own blogs, upload your videos, and blast it out. You can blast it out to, to, to whatever, you know. It's a place where we all meet, you know. Right now, the, the Internet is a wild west. That's why all this garbage is happening. We need one place where we're all on page. We're on the same page. We're all on code. We need this. And people didn't think of it before. I don't need you, color man. I got YouTube. Yeah, well, Negro Peen is beating your head up, beating you upside the head, you know. There's no Negro peeing in there commenting on shit, you know, in our social network. There's nobody, no distractors and everything. We had debate. We could disagree and everything like that. But this I, this toxic energy of people who don't like this at all. So you can't fool me, you know, and act like you're a pan-Africanist when we know you want this shit to fail. You want the ADOS, FBA. We could do it right here in America. Negro stall attack. You want that to prevail. You know, you want... You want to rally around the flag. You want to raise the red, white, and blue. That's what you're about. You ain't fooling nobody. 
I don't care if you took a trip to Africa. I know a lot of you people go to Africa just to discredit this movement. I went to Africa. They treated me like shit. I was in Ghana. I didn't like it, man. Bye, bye, bye. I'm, I'm, uh, so I'm back in America, man. You know, you know, red, white, and blue. White man, white man, red, white, and blue. You know, you know, white. Fricker, fracker, fryer, fracker, just goom, bah. White man, white man, rah, rah, rah. Fricker, fracker, fright man. You got niggas out here, you know? I know you. I know you want to get back and buck dance a coon. You know, I know it. I understand, man. We got to get the coon out of us. You know, we got to get the coon out. Of, that coon demon is is it. It's called the Negro Shuffle. You know, the Negro will shuffle. You're gonna see the biggest shuffle tomorrow at the Super Bowl. All these niggas up on stage at halftime, man. You know, and the bottom. Line, oh yeah, the Super. The, I had turned off that menstrual act a long time ago. I don't want nothing to do. I don't care about. The freaking NFL. I watched the game and everything. I, yeah, but that doesn't mean like this is the main event. This Pan African movement to me is the main. Event. This is the Super Bowl I'm looking for. Building in infrastructure on the African continent. Building a global pipeline to the African continent. This is what I live for. This is what college essence live for. You know, some people. Hey, you you like the NBA and stuff. Like, yeah, it's just like that. But I would like to see us with a NBA. I, the ritual calls just somebody. Forrest Whitaker, I think it was just investing in the African NBA. I can't wait to see uh, the African NBA. Well, we that's monetized and everything like that. We got uh, teams on the African continent that are that are just getting blown up big and stuff like that, you know. And so we got sports arenas on the continent that we get, uh, you know. And it ain't about just doom and gloom, folks. Hey, I want to have some fun too. I want to see African resorts. I want to see uh, 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 stadiums built. I want to see also like that. Yeah, I want to see everything. All the stuff that all the stuff that we have in America, I want to see on the African continent. It's simple as that. It, 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 nothing to freaking uh, like that. Whatever we here have in America, man, I want to see African, uh, a Pan African, African like theme park. You know, I want to see a theme park built. You know, absolutely, color, absolutely building. Uh, you gotta have a vision. Well, you gotta have a vision. <laughs> you know. We'll, we'll, we'll What's appreciate up, brother? Like, you want to brother? Bring in our other brother. Um, yeah, that might be a little better now. I got to my other phone, but uh, appreciate yeah, yeah. the brothers and uh, appreciate the energy. But yeah, I just think we just need to keep a united front. Y'all know I'm coming from Sierra Leone, but uh, it all started with Brother Dinas, and then Brother Bomani took over, and I've been on pretty much almost every tour. And uh, well, I definitely actually, actually started with it. Actually started uh, with it. the whole thing started with Bomani. You know? Yeah, I I, I know the history, yeah. but. <laughs> and when I came through it, I came through Dinah's first. Right. And <laughs> Bo Money was on Dinah's show. Yeah. And I was like, man, that, that brother sounds like he know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, absolutely. Does, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, they sound like they know what they're talking about. I've been trying to get to Africa for over 20 years. So I was like, you know what? Let me stop talking about it. Because I was so moved by their conviction. And it's sincerely in what the things that they were saying, and it actually motivated me and moved me to get off the off the sidelines. And you know, it wasn't like I didn't have the money. It just I never prioritized me actually going. I said, okay, I'll go one day, but it wasn't like something I wanted to do right away because I was doing things here in the U.S. So, like you said, Carla, a lot of folks be saying like, oh, well, you're not really doing nothing in America. That's not necessarily the case. Some of us are doing very well in America. Don't <laughs> yeah. get it. Right. Don't get it twisted yeah. now. Well, some of us, but we, some this of us, is a part of us, some of us been is, at work. Yeah, this is yeah. a part some of us. Been at, this is a void as an African American. This is a void, right? Yeah. And the Jews, yeah. when, when I was a kid, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Well, like, I grew up in New York. I grew up around a lot of white immigrants, right? Are you from New York area? No, no, Please. I'm from Chicago. Chicago. Okay, well, you say the situation. When, yeah. Every time I hear white boys talk, right? Yeah, we're going to Italy for the summer. You know, we're going to Sicily for the summer. You know, Jewish kids are all I'm going to tell them they come back with their pictures and everything like that. And then they tell, ask me, so where are you going to the summer in North Carolina? I got to go to North Carolina, right? They go <laughs> over go the south. It's the south, you know. I said, then I said to myself, that's not, you know what I'm saying? And, and I said, oh, yeah, my homeland is North Carolina. Well, I didn't originate in North Carolina, right? Yeah. And so it's going on me, right? We need so, and, and like I said, with Sierra Leone, Liberia, right? That's where our ancestors returned to and built, right? We that's a part of African American heritage, right? And so yeah, why, why, being like this, 
we have Ghana is one thing, Liberia and Sierra Leone is another thing, you know, and so it's CLA. You got to have something outside of America, right? Because when you leave America, right, you gain something, you know, you gain something. Because right now, yeah. right, white people look at you like, oh, yeah, I've been, I, I travel the continent. Right away, they're like, oh, I don't know you. So, so in other words, basically, they're thinking, you mean to tell me I, I can't, uh, uh, you, you don't know the NBA stats right now? Something <laughs> else on your mind? You see what I'm talking about? Yeah, I you, know. Exactly. You're doing, you're doing something. You, see, without, you don't without watch football. Game, you don't like. You don't watch baseball. No, I don't. Yeah, I'm yeah. too. You know, I'm too busy doing stuff to be sitting up here watching games with guys that's making millions of dollars. I got too much to do. I'm not making millions. Right, right. right. I care about uh, uh, who's going to win a Super Bowl. These guys going to make a gross ten, twenty billion dollars or whatnot. And by all, all I know is the bag is not coming my way. You know. No. No. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Those the fuck I care about what they do, you know? Yeah, okay, go ahead. You know, whatever. You know, black <laughs> like I got, I want to see this go. This is something I can say, wow, man. Yeah, and when I go over to Liberia, when I go over to Ghana and whatnot, you know, I'm having a good time seeing things invested. This is a future. This is mine, right? You can't take this away from me, Mr. White Man, you know? Yeah. So I come to America. Oh, I'm doing my thing. Everything. I got my own business. Africa and Pan-Africa has now become a business, right? Yes. What is it? Yeah. What is it? What is it? It's my business, right? So when I get on a plane, oh, I'm going to Ghana it's tomorrow. Ooh, 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 ooh. Wait, 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 what do you mean? Where are you going? Why are you going there for? Business, you know, business. I got business. Yeah. I got business you don't know about, you know. This I is the world. I know. I know, hey, I know they want to stick their nose in your business and ask you, well, what business do you have on the African continent? Exactly, Mr. man. This is what we're dealing with with the <laughs> nigger people. <laughs> this is what we're this is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with nigga shit, you know. Uh, oh, they, man, the Bomani's public enemy number one. How dare you bring five hundred <laughs> people to the continent, man? You know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Negroes, man. You know, you know this, man. It's kind of like you being a, a little rapper. And you got to go after the big rapper to gain a little, get a little, a little something out there. A little, exactly. you know, use a little somebody, love. somebody must have put him on your on your trail, Bomani, because. You keep a low profile, so I'm thinking, like, how the hell did he I'll just? Tell you, I you told you, what, yeah, it's simple. It's just people in our organization, Black Star uh, community. I that it had to be somebody who and gave him that information. They like hand them a, po a folder and say, "Yeah, attack." That's what they did. They sick them on you like a dog. And I told, I told Bomani, right, because Bomani was laughing when Negro P came after me, right? He said, <laughs> "I said, Bomani, in a matter of time, man." Well, I mean, it, hey, hey, hey. In fairness, Colin, I can see him coming out too because you are well, you are well documented. In, in, in oh yeah, I say it like that. I believe yeah. that. But yeah. Marty, because he got a low key. Hey, that's a, that's why I was shocked, man. I was like, yo, <laughs> what was he still doing? Tourism video. <laughs> I said, I said, tourism. And so, and so I said, I said, I said, I said, but he came out the Bomani. Then I knew he fucked up, right? Yeah. Because yeah. but we all know Bomani, and I said he done fucked up. That's why he's right now. He's like, I gotta get him. You know what I'm saying? He knows yeah. he fucked up. And then when he found out, Bomani didn't catch this, right? But he was saying, you got 25,000 subscribers, right? You've been around, you got thousands of videos. Yeah. He goes, why aren't you monetized? He's basically saying, shit, if I had 25,000 things, I'll be monetized. You ain't. Bomani's like, I ain't you sweating ain't no the monetization. You ain't got no life, no career, no nothing. Yeah, and so he's like, like why aren't you monetized? Why aren't you monetized? I say, see, the bottom line, he know he fucked up. He know he fucked yeah. up. But then he left it alone, right? And then, so uh, I knew he was, he's lurking in the back, right? Then he come up, I finally got him, you know? I'm a money time, but skipped out of Ghana and whatnot, you know? And then yeah. I was saying, I was like, I was like, what, 35? Oh, come on, man. So anyway, the bottom line, now he's like, yeah, I really got the goods on him, man. Stay yeah, tuned, man. Like, don't send him money. Don't send him money. Now he's talking about land fraud now. And the chief is, that the chief is running, the chief has been ran out of town. <laughs> that chief run that area. That is unbelievable. I'm telling you, man, it's just disgruntled members in our group that literally just, um, you know, since they can't have their own ways, they're just going to sabotage them and, and try to mess things up for everybody else. And it's like, wow, you have a personal issue with one person, so you want to destroy the, you know, the, the business. They, that's sad, that's sad, sad thing about people. Uh, people, man. That's but they don't mess with the wrong person because I'm a fighter. And that's that's the, the whole thing, the whole thing Garvey did, man. Garvey was like this. Well, people, well, people this, is how, this is how Negroes are. Right? This is how the Negro mind, right? All right. Hey. Black people, when the when the white man began attacking Garvey, right, they're saying, "Well, maybe the white man really loves us, right?" And so <laughs> we basically threw Garvey under the bus, right, 
to get closer to the white people. And we basically abandoned Garvey. Black people were going into Garvey, the UN offices, stealing stuff, stealing typewriters, stealing equipment, and everything like that, uh, 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 stuff like that. So we basically sabotaged Garvey out of our own ignorance and everything because we thought that was going to be a uh, uh, show in America that, that Garvey was a dangerous foreigner. He was an alien. They called him an alien. And uh, uh, he's not American. You know and so the whole, before Garvey came, we weren't Americans our damn self, right? And then uh, they started telling us, uh, you want to be good Americans, get rid of this Garvey guy. And so the bottom line is that's what we have have now. You know, black people like think that if they get rid of Bamani, right, that uh, uh, we're going to be back in the good graces of white people and the Negropeans that want to go to Africa and continue on with their nonsense and everything, but that's that's not going to happen. You know, it's not going to happen. The bottom line is, we go to Africa, we have a different reason. When you see African American diaspora come to Africa, why not? We have a, something to say. We have something to say to Africa. We have something to say to the world. Right? We're not going to sit back and be quiet and and like that. We want land. We want to build stuff and everything like that. Same way everybody else is. Right? Tell us why we can't build stuff like that. It's our ancestral homeland. We want to build this. You're going to benefit from what we're doing. We're going to mutually benefit from. You know, when people try to say the, the gist of it, and no one ever tells anybody, okay, do you think any, anything wrong with what he's trying to do? You know, at first, the first, he attacked Bamani by saying Bamani was building an all African American, not known Jamaican, Jamaican, you know. He's building an all African American, including kicking out uh, Ghanaians out of their land and all. That's what he started with, you know. That's what he started with. And then when it revealed that he has Ghanaians on the ground, and it wasn't like that, right? He tried to change it up that he's scamming. Remember, right, right, but mind, do you remember that? He first started by saying that you were yeah, building an exclusive African American. Way, he would try to get you another way. Yeah, so, so, so he found you know, out. Then he started wow, digging and that. digging and started telling people yeah, what he asked for publicly, for, for people to reach out to him if they have any issues or they know anything. Like publicly, you have, you have, you have said that on several calls. So, and then so you know, so you, you, you know anything like about you know, it, you know they report you, know. you to him. And so so the bottom line, he's there's there's some, some secret people working behind the scenes behind it. He's not by himself. Yeah. You know, they're working behind yeah. the scenes. That devils and race traders are working yeah. together. They're all working together and everything like that. Basically, they want Africa to be Africa. They're they're Af this is he gets so you gotta say so there's their Africa and there's our Africa, you know. Mm -hmm. Their Africa is a safari. A place where they could, their women could run loose and run around with African bucks. They're called longshore kwames, you know, and <laughs> bucks, you know, and everything like that. Molest our children on the beach and everything. Get rich. Chinese people come here, kill our, our, our uh, go off with the African elephant tusks. Remember the one lady, the, the, the tusk lady in Tanzania? They busted her. Kenya, she had like a, a, a ton of African elephant tusks, right? Getting ready to ship out of the thing. The African rhino, Noceros, is going extinct because of the Chinese and everything like that, you know? But that's their Africa. The world just comes and take what they want, you know, and give Africa charity and everything. But there's an Africa we know, an Africa of kings and, and empires and warriors and everything. And that's what we're bringing back. That's what they don't want, you know? We're bringing that, that spirit back to the continent, you know? We're warriors, you know? We're all connected. This is our African homeland. And the bottom line is, and the, the people that's governing Africa, you got a responsibility to us. You're, you're, and I tell a lot of Africans, I'm not satisfied with the way you're running things. You know, Nigeria, I'm not satisfied with you want things. But what do you? I'm an African American. Like 30 percent of my DNA comes from Nigeria. I care about what my ancestral homeland is. And don't tell me I have no right because that's a slave slavery. Oh, like, no, I don't give a damn. So what you're saying is the white man was right for slavery. If the white man was wrong, then I have every right to talk about Africa. You know. If he was right, then I'm a good old American Negro. I just stay in my place over here. So it's about who we are, you know, which we're redefining who we are. You know, that's what Pan African is all about. If something goes on the African continent, I don't give a damn from here to Madagascar. I want to know about it. You know, I want to know about it. I got people from Zambia sending me reports going on in they, Zambia. The Bar they, they, don't, don't, don't come over here, African Americans, with all that militant stuff. We don't we don't do that here in Africa. That's what they oh, say. Oh, so this is too bad. This is too bad. Yes, we do. What well, we do, you know, mm -hmm. what well, we do. How about that? And they can't stop us, you know. And about it. if it's gonna make you uncomfortable with your white friends and your whatever friends, so be it, you know. But African yeah, Americans the... spend eighty billion dollars a year on tourism. We could we could basically set Africa free just by uh, by pumping money into the continent, you know. 
Just yeah, by that alone, the tourist dollars will freaking yeah. will put Africa in a middle class status, even before industrialization. Just tourist dollars. That's how everybody else started. All these other countries had people coming into there, like the Thriller in Manila. Remember that? The fights in the Philippines are billions of dollars, yeah. media and entertainment alone. You know, if African Americans, we start doing movies on the continent and uh, as the videos and stuff like that, we start showcasing. Our, if we have our start having our major events, you know, instead of having it in Louisiana Essence Festival, have it in freaking Accra, Ghana. You know, and in fact, it's probably better if you have it in Ghana anyway. You know, in Ghana anyway. You know, yeah, so the whole place rotate, is the they're they're rotating around, sort of like the uh, African. Uh, there you go. What is it called? A uh, Cincinnati uh, Fest that they have every year. Ex, uh, the ex, 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 uh, the ex, black expo. It's, uh, it's, no, they have the they have the music fest in Cincinnati every year. We can add that on the African continent and then rotate it among West African nations. That'll right. bring a lot of that. Do you know we did that in the seventies, nineteen seventy seven Festac, right? The Nigeria, Lagos, Nigeria. Stevie Wonder was there and everything like that. That was the the largest uh, contingent out. This is CIA was watching this. This was a couple of years after the Ali fight, you know. The largest okay. contingent of attended with African Americans. There were people who had already been on the continent, right? That's how that's how many of us were on the continent in the seventies. The, 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 when they had Festac in Lagos, Nigeria, the the old uh, 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 you know that old arena um, uh, the, in Lagos, uh, uh, Bermani, that old uh, Lagos arena. They had Festac there. It was like a big festival. They had arts and craft a festival. Africa World Festival African Arts. That was the first annual. The majority of people there. Outside Nigeria came from Black America. They were like, "Yo, we gotta stop this shit, man. We, if if this continues on, man, yo, exactly. yo." Know? And so it all stopped in the eighties for some reason. All just all all the Pan African stuff just just went away, you know. And so now we're we're just picking up where our people left off, you know, uh, and build, doing these uh, festivals, and events, and stuff like that. We're gonna have another fest act, you know. We're gonna start moving our events on the African continent, you know. You know, get your passport. Everybody get their pa passport up, folks. You know, if you don't do nothing, yep. get your passport. Passport Absolutely. up. If, you, if you're an adult, if you're an adult and you don't have a passport, shame on you. Yeah, shame on you. Get your passport, you know, because the bottom line is we start having these events and stuff like that. You know, like in Liberia to, uh, uh, Monday, they're having a 200-year bicentennial. Every, a lot of people are going to be there. Heads say, even that idiot Roller Martin's going to be there, you know. It's gonna be a big guy. <laughs> that's it. Roly, 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 Poly, Poly, Roly, Poly, Roly, Poly Martin's gonna be there. You know, say what? Say it ain't so. Say it ain't so. I, I, and I was, and my, my boy told me at the other day. Man, I, I was oppressed the whole day. Man. Yeah, that's why. I, I was oppressed. Man. I was like, man, come on, you gotta be kidding me. But there's gonna be a lot of artists there. There's gonna be dignitaries, everything like that. So the bottom line is this: we need to make that the, that the center of attention. You know. The black media ain't helping us out, you know. The black media keeps you know, the so-called black media keeps Africa everything. Everything is confined to the borders of America. Oh, we're doing this, still like. But the bottom line is they're trying to disconnect us with Africa with this ADOS shit, you know, this ADOS FBA nonsense and everything. The bottom line is this: uh, 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 the Pan African movement. We got to showcase the events and everything like that. Why that's important and why we're attending and everything. And uh, that's gonna be that's the future, you know. Once we yep. have that that, 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 once we have that as a future, it started to me what we made when the when Black Panther came out, right? When Black Panther came out, everybody, oh, Africa, Wakanda, Wakanda, Wakanda. Man, there was, I didn't know there was going to be a backlash, man. People were like, oh, man, I'm American. I'm not African. I'm American. So get the hell out of you, African. And so we just basically, uh, uh, with the whole thing, uh, if Wakanda uh, got people entering Africa, hey, we'll bring it more wrong, right? But we just need more Pan African, African centered stuff. We're gonna send it on the African continent and everything. And this is this is this is our future, right? Why? Because it's saying that we're not confined to the borders of America. We're not confined to the American election election cycle. You know? No. Every every, every four years, oh, who gonna vote for? I don't care who gets in office over here. You know, I'll vote for whatever. I say like, yeah, this is my issue, right? Uh, what do you think about uh, uh, horse meat and dog food? Well, this candidate says this. This candidate says this. I'll take the candidate say this. That's what I'm voting. Nothing else. No. Uh, he says we should check uh, dog food that doesn't have horse meat in it. Right? Hey, hey, touch. You got my vote. You know. And I keep on moving my Pan African stuff. You know. I'm not gonna look to the American government for salvation anymore. You know. 
if you got, if you believe if this candidate believes that we should make sure that dog food does not doesn't have horse meat, hey, you got my vote. You know, you ask me what I'm voting on. Hey, that's what I'm voting on. You know, I don't have to be like this. You know, some people could vote why uh, the way uh, the way, the candidate that where he like he wears his tie. Well, that guy, I like the way he uh, uh, the color tie he wears. Hey, that's my vote. That's a, that's a, that's what I think about the American system about about now. You know. I like that. Yeah. I, I like the way that guy his tie is. You know, I will vote for him. <laughs> what about this one? I, I don't give a shit about that's that. The popularity now, come, contest. Now, come up with a Pan African policy, right? Which I'm disappointed because right now Biden administration has put sanctions, putting sanctions on Ethiopia. They're putting sanctions on Mali. They're putting sanctions on uh, 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 a couple other countries, right? Why? Because Ethiopia is not bending to the Arabs, right? Mali is kicking out the French and all these other people. And so the bottom line is, I'm pissed that uh, 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 Obama extended uh, sanctions on Zimbabwe, you know, uh, 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 racist sanctions and everything. Since no one's talking about lifting those sanctions on Zimbabwe and all stuff like that. So what do I got to vote for? What, what do I got to benefit? What, what, what do I benefit from? You know, my politics is, is, is like, like I said, the, the guy who says we're going to get rid of dog uh, horse meat out of dog food and everything, I'll vote for that. Other than that, man, nigga, you have nothing else to vote for. I don't give a damn about none of these issues that they put up on the table. Oh, we, I don't care about that. Bottom line is this. Well, why is the United States putting sanctions on uh, uh, they kicked uh, Ethiopia out of Goa and they're kicking Mali out? So in other words, we're living in a situation where you got black people who put the Democrats in power and we got no power to say, yo, what the hell are you talking about? Why, you know what I'm saying? Think about that. Without the black people, without black people, the Democrats wouldn't have any power. But yet they have yeah. a bold enough to put sanctions on an African country. See the disconnect? Yeah, absolutely. What the hell are we voting for? You know, what the hell are we voting for? What, what's this all about? You know? I ain't, I ain't vote for that circus. It's a, a three wing three -wing circus, you know? It's like, you know, we get nothing out of this uh, electoral system. Until I see the connection between Pan-African thought, right, and and the electric cycle, where uh, like this. Let me give you an example. I, I, I'm very partial to Liberians, right? The candidate that says that he's going to defer departure of, of, of uh, uh, Liberian uh, immigrants who still overstayed their visa or whatever like that, that's where you get my support. You know, I'm very partial to my Liberians. I believe America is responsible for what, like, what happened in Liberia. Were instigating that coup in 1980 and stuff like that. So America it's has no right to deport. They're definitely responsible. And so I, that's I know America owes Liberia a lot. So so if you're gonna ask me what my political stance is, hey, well, you take care of my Liberian brothers and sisters in America, and I'll support you. But if you're not gonna do that right, and you're gonna basically uh, uh, spit in my face and tell me that yeah, that doesn't you take care of the Mexicans, you're gonna take care of the Mexicans and everybody else. Hey. Let the Mexican try to put you in the office today. Absolutely. You know? 100%. I agree 100%. But, uh, yes, brother. Uh, Drop yeah, I, I appreciate what he said. And I just wanted to add the fact that, uh, we do have, uh, the 61st, uh, Independence Day coming up for Sierra Leone here in April. So I want to try to make that a big event as well because, I mean, right. these, these countries are really starting to come into their own, even though, it, you know, they had a civil war. And it's, they've been, what, 20 years outside the Civil War. But, you know, the country is still, you can go throughout the country and still see the effects of the war. So um, the fact that they can say that, you know, is a great thing. And then now the people have come together. So we definitely want to uh, showcase Sierra Leone as they have in these uh, independent days because, right. man, it's, it's a great thing to see that. It's a great thing to see everybody's come together. They didn't, they didn't heal. And now it's time to rebuild the nation. So. That's what I'm um, with my so, efforts to. Uh, have you joined our social network, the BAO? No, I haven't. I haven't. Uh, you join, uh, join it. We have a Sierra yeah, Leone I, saw, I saw you put it up there. I might go ahead and, and go ahead and do that because I've been dragging my feet on a lot of things because it's, it's just busy over yeah, here, man. Right there, we have, we, have a, we have a lot of people in the Sierra Leone chapter, you know, Sierra Leone chapter. Yeah, I heard you say that. So, yeah, I might get on over there because I definitely heard about the BAO. I just haven't had a chance to do much outside of – Running my business here, then starting a business there, and then hey, when you download chase out, when you download the app, it's right no. there on your right there on your phone, you know what I'm saying? So you download okay. the app, it's just like pulling up Facebook, your boom, it's right there. So you're right there you're always on there. And then all of a sudden you go to the Sierra Leone thing thing, and you know, you could ask to become administrator, you can create blogs, upload videos and stuff like that, you know. 
And so well, I I'll make, I'll make sure I do a commitment and go ahead and do it. Yeah. So so therefore you can network with people that of like mind in Sierra Leone, you know, uh, a group, you know, Sierra Leone group, you know. So, so absolutely. After, you know, so. so, so. But, uh, I'm doing that as well as I'm part of the Black Star Pan African uh, movement there right. in Ghana. Both 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 so, both and you know, also we we're all together. We're all together. It's not you know, we, we neighbor. Pan African Star, we're all one, one, one entity, you know. We're all one entity, you know. We're all we're separate, yeah. right? But we're all together. Yeah. We're linked together, you know. The social network yeah. brings us together. I look at it like I look at it like being in different states, you know. If I'm in Indiana, Illinois, and and Wisconsin and uh, uh, Missouri, all right here together. So I know people in every state. So that's that's the same way we can operate as we in Africa. Because I plan to be in both places, and I want to take a trip over to Liberia because I know about the history. Right. Um, so my thing is, I trace my lineage back to through DNA to Sierra Leone, but uh, we do have a little bit of uh, Liberia there as well, but it's just more Sierra Leone. But then with the Ghana thing, it's just the brothers have got good energy there. Mm -hmm. And then of course, that was the first place I went. So of course, if you go to Ghana first, you definitely gonna fall in love with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Especially if you go for money's tour. You know what I'm saying? Because oh, yeah, he showed man. the country. Tour, man. You know? I love it. But y'all be having too much fun, man, on the beach. Yeah, man. We <laughs> y'all having too much fun. I said, man, y'all have hey, too much fun. Hey, y'all just don't know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, y'all yeah. just don't know. We, we just don't know. Um, well, we most of what we show is just us doing the tourist day. Yes. Yeah, and things like that. But uh, even now, I just started showing more footage of us. It's like Sunset Cruise. It's us, social nightlife. Yes. Show, but... That's a great, that's a great getaway. Yeah, and that's why man. we have to keep showing people this is what it's not all like we're having fun, we're fellowshipping, we're having fun together. And people will look at somebody like Negro P and like, man, you sitting up in Austria, you know, and uh, on welfare and everything. All right, why am I listening to you, man? But mine is where all the fun's at, where all the energy and everything, you know. And so yeah, he he can't, he, and then he can't show and prove none of his work. I mean, where's your work at if he you has a work? <laughs> He has no work. Yeah, the nigga has no work. He has no work. He has nothing. He has nothing to show for anything but just sitting around talking about gossiping about what somebody else is doing. You know, he said, Dinah Samir loves money. You know, what is that? Yeah, I saw that. I saw, saw that. that. <laughs> I walked said, reach through the screen and just choked this chump. Yeah, he said, he said, he said, he loves money. Every time I, every time I call Dinah, right? I call him. First thing I says, I used to be in love. You love Boy, money. money. I used to crack it up, man. I always mess with him like that. You love money. Every time I get him on the phone, like, yeah, hey, what's up, Colin? You love money. <laughs> man, that chump, that chump better not, he better not be on the African continent while any of us there. He, yeah, the bottom know. line, we gotta we gotta put a fire out against him, man. Anybody see this nigga, stop him, you know. You know, the hell with it, you know. Don't be on the and also these Negroes that Used to roll with us, and you now you want to mess with Negro pen. Don't be around us, man. You know you won't be going. You won't be happy. We find out who you are, man. We're gonna you, you'll be in a cafe somewhere in Ghana and be like, oh yeah. And next thing you know, we're gonna roll up on your ass like, yo, what, what, what the fuck? What's all this shit? You know? Well, I, well, I, well, I, bah! <laughs> yeah, all that, all that Negro splaining. <laughs> that Negro splaining shit. You know? You better pick. You better. You better join us and pick a side, nigga. You know that's how it is. <laughs> <laughs> we, this ain't the old school Pan Africans we love. No, no it ain't. We, it we, ain't. We, we saw where it got our ancestors. Got us nothing, you know. We gotta let and, you know. And we bring up new new generations in the movement because I'm bringing my son. But money got his son. Dinah's got his son. People are bringing their kids into the movement, so we got a whole new batch of young Pan Africans coming up. So it's gonna be a world of difference. We ain't right, going to all. Different. Ain't gonna be all. Yeah, you go. This is our side. This is what we're doing, right? If you want to get involved, with it, you better show cause because we're not playing games, but we're not gonna just gonna roll up and disappear, whatever, like that. They think this is just a fad, whatever, like it's gonna go away. Nah. Uh -huh. uh, no, think, no yeah, yeah, we're building generational wealth, generational connection. I mean, you're talking about our children running and owning industries versus going to apply for a job. It's a major shift. You know, what I mean, it's, yeah. you, think, you think that's what we want, but you know, as we talk about uh, people like the Negro Pian, he said that you know it's not up to him to want to see us progress and, and things like that. It's not up to him 
um, to you know to, to to help the next uh, black person and things like that. So he has none of those values. And then last I remember, you know, I, I don't know what kind of children he has, but um, I know they're not, well, even, even, half if they're, even if they're even if they're well, black, he, has, he has a half breed. He's, he's, he's with a white porn star. Well, what is he really going to teach them? You know, what is he really going to teach them? He was the way that he was to teach them. Like us, our enemies. He says that what he wants. He wants the British Empire. Says that what he wants is what he wants is right. What he wants is this. He wants the old school, uh, uh, black. What he he's the whole thing. He wants to transport Europe in Africa. You know, where that's what it is like. stuff like that. You know, and so like no, no. Where it's basically it's uh, Africans are very tolerant, right? But then what they want to do is bring the LGBTQ and they want to bring all this stuff like that to the continent and everything. So Africa, so we're saying no, we don't want all that. We want to build. So that's kind people. of like his agenda. So maybe that's one of the reasons you have issues with us because you know we don't allow many all this little weird stuff that goes on. We don't allow it. You know, we're, we're basically a black community with black values and black. And they don't. Want that. They don't want that. They don't, that's and what they don't no, want. There's none of that mixing and none of that. Uh, Swirling or all these other terminology people come up with, and people like yeah. it, literally like, yeah. Trump, like yeah. how, can, how can how can I get away with this? How can I do this? Like like this a crime? I'm like, uh, we're, we're, we're bottom, bottom. We're in the way. We're in their way. You know, we're <laughs> yeah. in their way. Get rid yeah. of it. They're, they're, they're in our way. They're in our way. The Africa that they want is people coming in, old men with little children. You know, they better and, get used to it. They better get yeah, the used bottom to line, it. The bottom line is they don't want black, 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 white, bay on the continent, or you and I on the continent. No, they don't want us on the continent at all, you know? And that's why there's a global assault on heterosexual, strong black men, you know? And you got uh, black men are supposed to be strong. They just go along. Look at all, all these stupid dudes in the NFL and everything like that. Every time you look around, they got dresses on and wearing high heels and shit like that, you know? That's what they want for the black man. You know, you know, when the black man, you ever see a black man with authority, right? We got bass in our voice. We got authority and everything like that. But the one thing we don't have is power. So when you get to the African continent, right, and you got power with that bass and authority, that terrifies them. Yeah, yeah, they have I agree. Years, <laughs> they have 500 years of buck breaking the, the, the strongest black men, right? Now these black men, we're rising up, right? And we're saying we're going to build Africa and everything. They don't want that. They don't want to sit across people like you and I when we talk about negotiation. We're going to say, carry your fucking ass. Get the hell out of here. We don't need you, you know? Go ahead, try anything. You know they don't want that. They're terrified. You know they yeah. want weak leaders and want that they can manipulate. You know people have been brainwashing the institution, and everything. We, uh, the presence of African Americans, right? People coming from the first world going to Africa, saying we could build something, th terrifies them because they got Africans. A lot of Africans figure that everything good is in Europe. You know, we, I got to get out of here. I got to get out. Of here. I tell Africans, why, why can't we build your institutions to make them world class? Why does the Nigerian guy be educated in Cambridge and Oxford? Why can't we make you got a building? Everything in Oxford, Oxford is just a little shell. It's who's in there. You know? Why Absolutely. can't we make educators and everything on the continent? So you know I mean? that's billions of dollars you could save by keeping people on the African continent. They don't have to travel abroad. Because they come abroad, they lose part of themselves. They become part of Germany and stuff like that. And they begin. Uh, 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 manipulate. That's why, what do you think the mess we have in Nigeria right now, where there's no allegiance to Nigeria, where the Nigerians basically work for the oil sector and everything, they're, they're in bed with or you international oil companies and everything, and Nigeria is just a place. Nothing's progressing. That's like I said in the top of the show right here today. There's a difference between a nation. A nation, you're, you have your industrialist class, right? You have your finance class, you have your scholar class, you have your working class, you have your warrior class, you have all these things, but they're all on one thing, team, your nation state, right? Right now, the uh, the, the allegiance of the, 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 the financial class or the wealthy class in Nigeria is not tied to building Nigeria, you know? Nope. That's why, why you think the warrior class don't know what, what's protecting, why you think they're able to go to Boko Haram and all these other people? Because there's no allegiance to the nation of Nigeria, you know? That's why yeah. they're disintegrating. What we want to say is this, if you're born, if you're African, you're Lord, your allegiance to Africa. You're not allegiance to, to caliphate or Islam, none of that shit like that. You know, your allegiance is to Black Africa. You know, race you first. Don't agree with that? You know, your allegiance not to the USA, whatever like that. Your allegiance is Africa, right? If you do betray us and whatnot, by law, you will be put to death. 
You know, as simple as that. Well, so, we're a ban- a banishment. Well, I, no, I've heard death. The, the, the bottom line: yeah. some people, some of these people need to know. Uh, 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 put uh, get on that uh, that that rope. You you sold this. You tried an insurrection, all because you didn't like the outcome of an election. You tried this and everything. Several people got killed. Uh, 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 you got six months to prepare. You know, but you're gonna go on the gallows. You know, that'll send a message. That'll send a message. If you can't. You in this continent right here. We welcome you, but the bottom line, if you're working for foreign agents and everything, too many Africans, Af- you know how many times, you know African leaders live in fear of assassination? Because the Europeans could press a button anytime. You got, you got to go, you know? Crews are all over the continent because because no one knows who's running things. The oil companies and the UFP, European interests and everything, that's what's satisfied. A, a, a head of, a, an African heads of state, the, he's not responsible to his people, right? He's responsible to those people that are uh, uh, that own the industries and that the foreign capital and everything. That's who is who's uh, first. If you don't, you don't you don't play by, by their rules, they will remove you. You know they'll find yeah, some. True. CIA does that all the time. They basically profile people. I think Mugabe, uh, um, um, Mobutu Sese Seko got uh, uh, killed Patrice Lumumba. Right? They found this guy out. He liked women and everything. They profiled him. Right? So they invited him overseas. Right? Got him in uh, Belgium, got him in a place like that, got him drunk and everything, and got him open up. What do you want or not? You know, this guy wants power, right? We can use him. So when the right time came, why not? They put him back in the Same thing happened in Liberia. Same thing happened in every African country. Same thing happened to Kwame Nkrumah, you know, some junior officer somewhere thought he should be leader and everything. But CI final, okay, you know. That's why it's violent. Okay, come over here. You know, yeah. You know, as soon as Kwame Kuma did something, talking about nationalizing the, uh, he shouldn't have said that, man. He wasn't, he, he wasn't ready for that shit. We're gonna nationalize the, uh, the box site. <laughs> and you know, he's on, he's away on vacation when the next thing you know, a coup happened, right? He, you know, that's how it happens, man. That's, yeah. that's what that happens, you know. Now, Mobutu Seko stayed in power so long because he was doing the West bidding. It wasn't until Kabila, you know, did they kill him and put his son in there, right? Kabila said, yo, man, he goes, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'll never forget that. That was a fun time, man. Kabila uh, was uh, laying dormant in the Congo, and he was like King Kong, just came out of nowhere, gathering forces. And next thing you know, they're having negotiations, but his forces were advancing while him and Mabu, uh, Seishi Seiko were sitting down negotiating. He said, my forces are going to be here in two days. And next thing you know, uh, uh, Mobutu ended up in Morocco or somewhere, you know? And uh, Kabila, man, he was like this. Had he been state president, then they assassinated him and put his son in power. You know, and his son raped the continent, you know, uh, uh, raped the continent. I like the president of the Congo right now because he's kicking the Chinese the fuck out of there. He said, y'all got to go. He said, y'all got to go. Go, go, go. You know, uh, Mr. Yes, Mr. Change must come. He said, y'all got to go. You know, so we got we got that energy on the continent right now. With Africans from Zambia and everything, they're tired of European, tired of poverty, they're tired of all this shit, right? And so our message is good, is permanent. Don't think these the, the Africans, when we do these stuff like that, they're not listening to this, you know? You of know, course they are. We got some people in the Zambians and the BAO, but they're, they're, they're so radical. I'm like, yo, y'all need to calm down, you know? Y'all probably <laughs> need to calm down, man. I said, yo, this motherfucker's like, yo, damn, we're ready. Yo, we're ready to do this shit, man. They're ready. They said we're ready for y'all to come here now. They want black, black American Zambia right they now. Say they say the same. They say the same thing as Sierra Leone. All countries in Africa say that, man. We're ready for y'all to come home. But we just got to. The BIO is a good thing because it's a good way to to network with each other while we're doing it. Because I got people in Liberia on the ground, Sierra Leone on the ground, and stuff like that. We just basically have to coordinate together how we could do this, you know, and and do this, and we have to get that. We really have to get that black investment class, you know, you know, the black uh, the business, business class. But we need that class over there. When I, I don't know why uh, 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 that uh, we have these so-called black billionaires and everything, like millionaires and billionaires and everything, and they always give themselves awards and everything. And I try to tell them, man, that, you know, look, man, if you basically worth five billion dollars, man, what's what's uh, investing two billion dollars in West Africa? That could make all the difference, but. You want to you want to give yourself. Well, I hate this when I see black billionaires in America. I'm actually, and they always give the glory to America. You ever notice that? 
Yeah, they, they write the check. That's why. They, 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 they print the check for them billionaires. Greatest thing, blah, like that. And I'm like, yo, look, you know, tell that illegal dangate. Nigeria made him a billionaire, you know, richer than any black billionaire in America. And there's more, there's, Africa has the potential to have a thousand illegal dangates, you know, if we're organized, you know, if we're organized and we don't have disruption, like this Negro Pian shit, you know, we're building and we're on the ground and stuff like that. And we're making an attempt to build uh, the future for Africa. That's plenty for everybody. It'd be infinite. What we mean infinite means? It means abundance. Right? I mean, you know, there'll be people getting rich and prospering beyond our imagination. It'll be like the norm, you know. But if we keep basically our best and brightest to Europe, and uh, and everybody's trying to just loot and shortchange Africa, and nobody's building infrastructure, and what's not going to happen? So we have. That's what we have to do. We say, look, we're trying to build Africa. I want to see the coastline of Sierra Leone littered with cities or resort cities and stuff like that, you know, where people could come and people could do offshore banking and some of everything. Why, why, why can't that happen? You could do that in every other country in the world. What's wrong with Sierra Leone? So why can't we build this uh, luxury city in the coast of Sierra Leone, the coast of Liberia? You know, why can't we do yeah, that? Bro. We just have to have the vision. You know, yeah. you're going to Dubai. That's the Arab man's vision. You know, that's the Arab man's vision. No. Where, the I have man? no desire to go to Dubai. None. Yeah, I have no, 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 it's a beautiful city, you know. But the bottom line is, I want to see. I want to be in a city where our people are built, where it's all about me. It's my history on display, my culture on display, my Black African Absolutely. on display. You know, we could do that. You know, we could do that, but we have to get it out of mindset, you know. You know, we, we travel the world and now we give our money to Europe and all these other places and everything. That's fine, visit everything. But when you want to see what, but we've been taught that Africa has nothing to offer. I you disagree know? with that. Yeah, that's, I'm that's, going that's, to get I'm going to I'm going to get my African queen, baby. I already scoped yeah, scoped yeah, out yeah. one. Or I, you, African, or Liberian girl, <laughs> I know. Congratulations. Yeah. I saw that. Congratulations. Yeah. We're married. Well, we're supposed to get married, but I, I go, I'm going over there. So we we'll probably get married over while I'm over there, you know. So I'm over there in the summer. All right. What's up? That's what's up. That, absolutely. The hey, first thing we got to do is get the get the foundation straight, and that's family. So we definitely plan on intermarrying to the tribes. But I got me a Monday, a Monday full of sisters. So hey, I plan on doing the same thing, Carla. So congratulations. You know, find yourself a beautiful African woman and buy like, like that, you know, none of this. All these guys over here talking about, oh, I want to go. If you want that booty, go to the Dominican Republic if you want the booty and all that. Come to Africa, man. Find, Africa is where you find your wife at. You know, somebody's going to take care of you, It'll make you whole like a man. Because of you know, what we have, I mean, no shade to African American sisters, man, but it's just not happening here, you know? <laughs> I ain't going to even speak on that. <laughs> yeah, yo, it's well, all like, about, topic, man. It's all about the continent, baby. It's all about the continent. For the women, that's where the that's where the women at, you know. Mr. Untouchable say, yeah, uh, yeah, you got to yeah. Uh, Dinos, I gave the Dinos a night off, man. You know, I know he's chill. Oh, that's what it is. I gave Dinos a night off. Yeah, I said Dinos a night off. We we did a show, and now Dinos exhausted. Man. <laughs> he's exhausted, so I gave him a night off. So yeah, I gotta, I gotta get over there, and make sure, because I'm going to, I'm going to uh, Nigeria with Dinos in in, in uh, August. So oh, you going I to? Gotta, yeah, man, I, I can't. Hey, I gotta go. I gotta go. I I've been yeah. wanting to do. It's on my bucket list. And who better to go with than Dinus? Dang, go with. That's what it is, bro. Uh, and also tell me your friends and whatnot. You want to go to Africa? Join Bomani. Join Dinus. And join other people. I I, I uh uh. Well, I want to join me. I do tours now as well to Sierra Leone. So you could join me. So we want to keep this money flowing within the family because these right, are right, right. Like pioneers. You know. The bottom line is. Uh, uh, black people uh, make $1.2, $1.3 trillion a year. Most of that goes back. So the bottom line is when we have black dollars circulating in our community, big black dollars, right? People swiping a car for $5,000 or that, and you got people like, the bottom line is we do more of this stuff, stuff like that, and pretty soon we're going to be doing manufacturing together, wholesaling, distribution across the world, and, and everything like that. We basically... Uh, 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 basically, um, uh, 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 make money among ourselves, right? And it shows you that the Pan African movement, unlike this so called ADOS, ain't, ADOS ain't making nobody no money. The Pan Africans are making big dollars, man. Like you said, dinosaurs love money, you know. <laughs> the Pan African movement 
has money. Yeah, the guy is putting in work. He put in deserve the work. Work. You know, work. What he put in work. But you know? money put in work. He deserve what he gets. It ain't like uh every all this uh uh tourism just came together by happenstance. No, that brother been doing a lot of phone calls. But, but, but your brother, but, brother, the thing is, you know, what I'm is, come on now. People think that when you're pan African, you're supposed to be work like uh, for free. You're supposed to be <laughs> humble, poor, righteous, teach. Get the fuck out. It's a business. Just like everything else, a, a business. You Absolutely. Know, because it's a business, when it becomes a business, it becomes our way of life. Then once you once once you know that you can make money without dealing with the white man system or not, and this start we start our um, pan African. I can't wait till we form our pan African investment clubs, you know. You know, we have the investment susus and everything. And we're able to funnel money to projects on the continent by putting our money together and everything. Once this becomes the norm and we're investing in everything, and we've got millions of dollars flowing across and everything like that, it's our business. Nobody's going to be looking at the Pan-African movement and laugh. You know? No. Because no. we're doing it. They really are laughing now, to be honest with you. They're not laughing now because they, they see the potential. Now, they, were, they were laughing like 10 years ago. But now yeah, they were bad because we actually uh, uh, the year uh, 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 succeeded. Return, Made them put that that uh that frog in they throat. They were like, man, this could really be something because it made a, a billion dollars that year in yeah, tourism. Billion dollars. Yeah, billion dollars, billion dollars. Uh, Black America. Uh, Come, on Come on now. Come on now. That's yeah. what I'm. Talking about. And that energy is still exists to this point because we still been getting folks wanting to go. It's just that now because of the what I call the cold beer flu, it's yeah. got folks. Apprehensive because I didn't know where I didn't know where this COVID virus just came out of nowhere. You know? Absolutely, no, I know where you know, and they keep coming up with variants and stuff like that. And oh yeah, oh another variant. They got they got more variants down. They got like five or six of them in the pipeline, right? Just with exactly. Like that. So, so <laughs> bottom line is this, you know, these niggas, these motherfuckers never stop, man. You know, and we know what it's all about. And if you ain't got no Africa escape plan, then you basically. Subject to whatever they decide they want to release. Yeah, yeah. Bottom line is this: you will lose if you don't have an Africa escape plan. You will lose this. Your mind. Okay. Yeah, your absolutely. Mind. Because America is going yeah. crazy. Let me see if we can add this person in. Um, Go ahead. Uh, add I'm sure this question is for you, um, Kala, since you're the star of the show. <laughs> uh, we have uh, Miriam. Uh, can you unmute yourself? Oh. Hello. Uh, greetings, yeah, we, um, greetings, my sister. How are you? Uh, you have a hi. question for one of us? Well, first, I want to say thank you. I appreciate all you guys. I'm just learning about uh, Bomani <laughs> and this Sierra Leone. I can't see your name. And Go I've ahead. seen Kala before. Oh, is that a good thing or bad thing? <laughs> no, it's a good, it's a good okay. thing. Okay. A good thing, only good. And my question, and then I'll drop off and listen, is um, for... For people who don't really have that much money, what is the s smallest they can uh, invest in 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 something to do with Africa, so they can get an, a, a return and then invest again until they build up enough money that they can actually go and you know get a home and everything. A uh, good uh, question. Um, as far as that, um, the investments that we're dealing with is more so. Uh, people literally committing themselves to live and do business on the continent. Uh, but maybe Akala or Goham have... Um, well, let, me just add, let, me, let me just add one thing before you go, Carla. I would just say, if you haven't been to the continent, the first thing you should do is visit. Mm -hmm. You should visit first, and then based off of what you see and the connections that you make, then you should be able to decide what you can do as far as investment. But I would say if you haven't been, you got to visit first and then look at what your options are as far as investments. Go ahead, Colin. Yeah, so the whole thing is this. Like you said, visit first, right? And you'll get your aha moment, right? The main thing is, main thing is Bomani, when he does his trips, right, he has a payment plan, you know? You know, payment, payment like that, because he knows how we go. So, we have a payment plan as well. Payment plan, you pay it back. Once you get that payment plan, I know sisters, I know sisters be like, I got my payment. Yeah, I'm going to Ghana again. I got to pay it off. Yeah. See, once you have that moment, right, and you meet with that brother Bamani over here in the changeover in Amsterdam, whatever, and you get to the continent and you basically have that blast and everything, right? You get, you get, you develop that African bug and fever. Trust me, everything in you is going to find a way how to get back to the continent, right, and build something, right? 
you may come across something, you know. Not everybody don't get into shea butter. We got enough sisters in the shea butter. I mean, like that. There's many other things you can get into or, or uh, in the continent that you can build and everything. You just don't know what you're gonna find your niche and everything. It'll come to you, you know. Right? What do you, uh, let me ask you something, Sister Mary. What do you do for a living? What's your skill set? Oh, not much. I I used to write children's books, and uh, yeah, and then I also transcriber. Yeah, Kyle is the author himself. Yeah. So, so let's check this out. The whole thing is this: what you have to do is this, right? Uh, why you're in America, right? Why you're in America? It's a whole, it's a it's a life changing process. It's not overnight. We don't want to tell you that, right? Get yourself like a skill or something like that that you could basically port over to the African continent. You know, something that they need over there. You know, something they need over there that you could basically network with other people on the ground and everything. You'll get that fulfillment if you can open up a clinic or. Whatever it is over there on the continent that you're networking with the people on the grounds, I mean, that'll give you that sort of fulfillment and stuff like that. But the main thing is first is get your education, get your money right and everything in America, right? Well, I, I try to tell people all the time, all, all the time, the stronger you are here in America, the more easy that land is going to be on the continent, you know? The stronger it is. Then we go there and visit, you know? Go and visit. It's going to take you a couple of times. Visit. You always visit like once a year. It's a life-changing thing. It may take you 10 years, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. It may take you 10 years of going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then after you've been there so many times, you got so many people in your network and everything that like you know and everything, you'll be so familiar with the continent, right? And the right people, the right person is going to meet you in the right place, the right time, boom, boom, boom. And then you're going to look up, you're going to, whatever you're out there, you're going to be like, wow, I did this. How did this happen? You know, but you, what you don't mm -hmm. want to do is just start off, you know, oh, I just want to invest in something like that. Go to the continent first, right? Go many times, network with people. You know, it's an important thing. The one thing we do as black people, we don't network because we, I'm learning this, right? We as black people aren't taught to love ourselves, right? 80% uh -huh. of all our business is done with white people and stuff like that. We do a lot of foolishness with uh -huh. other black people, you know? And so therefore, uh -huh. when you're around people like Bomani's professional and everything, and you're around black, you see other black people doing business and everything, you're going to be inspired. A lot of us don't have that confidence that we could do anything, but we don't see people look like us doing anything. Yeah. You know? So, so you, you uh -huh. I know, see, I know this. You know, I know this. When you, when you're around people and everybody around you, a bunch of foolish shit about about partying and foolishness and everything like that, you don't know where to start. Best thing to do is get around people of like mind, like Bamani, Brother Ham, right here, that's successful here in America and everything. Get in the flow of just visiting the continent and everything like that. Get familiarized with people. Make friends with new friends. New friends mm -hmm. with people mm -hmm. who are already doing stuff, you know, both here and on the continent. You got to cut ties yeah. with people who ain't doing nothing, right? And start mm -hmm. linking with people who are doing things with their lives here and over there, you know? And mm -hmm. it'll come to you. And trust me, if you do that right and you cut off all the losers and the negative people and the gossip and all this foolishness that, that they, the foolishness and the stuff that they put in Black America's minds 24 hours a day, You'll be on, trust me, you'll be on the right path. I cut a lot of people off. He's like, hi, Kyle, you get so, because I cut a lot of people off, you know? So I know a bunch mm -hmm. of people, a bunch of, bunch of foolishness, a bunch of nonsense and everything. In my personal life, my professional life, why not? I only deal with professionals, you know? Whether white, black, whatever like that, yeah. right? In the Pan-African world, I mean, certain people I deal with, Bamani, Dinas, and a few other people, right? I, 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 I like that, you know? I get rid of all the fools and unprofessional people and everything. And then once you have that, and you're building yourself up, right? And you get that, your career, whatever you're doing, say you want to go to school for nursing, whatever you're trying to do, and you got some sort of achievement for yourself, you're always going to be around other people that want to achieve. You know, we have this thing where we got to drag everybody along, right? When you get nah. to a certain level, right? You got a certain level, you got to cut people off, right? And then you got to tell them, look, if you want to be, be on my next level, you got to get to the next level, you know? And then, you. then when you start doing that, doing that right here, you're the, the right people are going to come in your life and whatnot, and you're going to connect with the right people on both sides while you're doing it, and it will happen for you. Trust me. You know? That's right. The law of attraction. You attract the, the type attraction. of people in your life that you need, and you don't want to drag nobody with you. I've cut off a lot of folks too, especially the naysayers. You know, oh, why are you going to Africa? There's there's lions there. Is that I've been to Africa <laughs> ten times. I haven't seen a lion yet. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you so much. I just want to tell you guys that um, do you know the the author of Rich Dad Poor Dad, Robert yeah. Kiyosaki? Yes. He's planning on going to Africa. 
He's probably he just, he hasn't been yet. I'm surprised he hasn't been. He's been already. I don't know if he's gonna stay over there, but he's he's uh making plans over there. Yeah, he might be looking for out because he's been talking about uh, the great the Great Depression that's coming. So maybe he is looking uh he must have been listening to our streams and he, he has developed him an Africa escape plan. Right, everybody got <laughs> yeah, exactly. plan. frontier, it's a whole frontier of the world. But the bottom line is if the, if, if the other people have their way, it won't be a black man, a black woman's continent, right? We'll be just to, uh, spectators in our own continent, you know? So that we can't let yeah. that happen. Yeah, we ain't gonna no. let that happen. Okay, I'm dropping off and I'm going to continue listening. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Just for the color. You ready to wrap it up? Yeah, we can wrap it up. Yeah, I know it's late on your end. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go to the gym. <laughs> yeah. Perfect timing right there. You've been on a marathon, man. Man, I ain't playing no games, man. It was talking about, about our color this uh, time. It, it, he's been. It's been rolling all like all night long. Yeah, well, you know, college, 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 man. From a different cloth, you know what I'm saying? So I get it. I appreciate <laughs> it. I, I learn a lot when I do listen to him and uh at Diners. I be in the chat, I don't comment all the time, but I every now and then I'll say what's up. But yeah. Colin be going, so he don't even see the messages sometimes. But yeah, I, I, go. I, yeah, I learn a lot, a lot of talking points. Yeah. So I like I said, I appreciate all the support, how this all come together and whatnot, you know, and we gotta keep this up, man. Everybody got to keep this up. Join the BAO social network, brother. Keep joining our live streams and everything like that. People know that we're here. We're not going to fold up tent and everything like that. All our platforms are going stronger. And we're, we're the message is getting out there, you know, we're, by sharing our life experience and sharing what we're doing. And you, you, you are a good addition to the uh, show tonight. You basically been on Bomani's tour, been in kind of 10 times and everything. And brother Bomani needs support. brother Bomani needs our support, you know. They're Absolutely, from, brother. He, they're coming from our brother. We're not gonna let that happen. Nah, nah. He got soldiers. Well, he got soldiers with him. I don't know who his other. Soldiers, is. Man. I don't know what they what they were talking about. Man. Yeah, um, yeah. You see us. We roll with units of folks, man. But literally, uh, one of the first to really break that barrier of what we've been trying to get, man, brother, forever land. We've been trying to break that barrier of getting legit land to build a community to do business and everything. And now we finally got it. And then they started coming out of the woodworks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because we finally got it. <laughs> yeah, like, I, even, I, I even there's there's uh, two other uh, dusty clowns. I don't know where they come from, uh, but they made videos. I just ignored them, you know, yeah. completely. But uh, yeah. this guy is this guy is 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 is, is really just a wicked black devil, and he's literally yeah. dangerous. He's more. He's, I, I think he's he's more dangerous than we can even imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because we you know why. Like, like in the video that he did last it's time, not, he's just trying not, to hold people. Like in, in suspense, like I got something to tell you about my money. <laughs> check this out, check this out. When somebody can openly lie like that, when he can, uh, he, when he can lie like that, right? I mean, lie like that with a straight face, brother. He can lie with a straight face, man. He's convincing, you know? He's convincing with his lies. He can say, yeah. yeah, because you know what it is? He, he thinks no one will ever run into him. That's what he thinks. Oh, yeah, because oh, yeah, that's, oh, that's, yeah. that's, that's the next thing that needs to happen. Civilization of where black people will be. He don't know we real people offline. <laughs> yeah, real people are blind. He's gonna have to run over. He's gonna have to face us one day. You know, you know. And so the bottom line, the bottom line, this guy, this guy right here, he's sitting in Austria, right, on welfare. You know, him and his wife and everything. They're on welfare because Austria, you know, those countries right there, got generous welfare system. You know, we talk about welfare in America, man. They give you a couple thousand dollars a month, uh, uh, housing. And some and everything you don't have to work, you know, in Europe, yeah, right? Switzerland. That in Switzerland, you know, you know what the problem with Switzerland is? Most of the people are on drugs, right? Because they have no nothing to do. The government, <laughs> the country's so rich, right? They just give the people money to survive, right? And everything like that. So what do the people do? Drink, party all day, and sex and orgies, and, and get hooked on drugs. The heroin, Switzerland also got serious drug problems, you know, because well, the people have like to make purpose. It's all like to make YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah, all they do is sit online, and make YouTube videos, and whatnot. You know, talk about all oh, the worlds. So look, man, it's nice to be rich in Europe telling me, but well, we got to stop uh, uh, capitalism and whatnot. You know, when you're sitting there benefiting from, it. let us get some of this capital. Right. Okay. Okay. You don't like capitalism? Give it to us. You know. Give it to yeah, us. Yeah, absolutely. Give all the billions and trillions of dollars of work for us. Well, let's see what we do with it. You know. No, you don't want us to have anything. 
You know, you want to sit there and preach all this love, peace, and happiness across the border? No, no. Y'all got no, it don't work like that. I think we we have different plans for Africa, you know? And that's us. All right, let's close it out, but money. Yeah, brothers. All right, brother Ham, man. Hope to see you on yeah, the show. man. Uh, go and Ham. Get him uh, your, you know, your contact details. Yeah, you can go to my uh, you can go to my YouTube channel, Go Ham Lifestyle Blogs, or you can go to Sierra Leone Pilgrimage.com and it'll yeah. explain what we're doing. We we have a tour coming up here in April. I think it's April 20th to May 3rd. Um, we advise you that you do your, your African ancestry or uh, 23andMe, your DNA test, so we can see if you all come back um, and share genetic material with any of the 16 tribes that's there. And you could be eligible. Could be. I say yeah, I did, I, did, I, did, I did my yeah. DNA. Unfortunately, I had no uh, uh, DNA from the Senegambia. My DNA mostly is from the Congo, uh, Eastern Nigeria, Mali, uh, Togo, Ghana, Ghana, Togo, right? And then that's it. You know, I have none in on this. What, that what, whole... what service did you use? Who, who did you I use? I uh, 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 DNA. I use like um, uh, uh, Ancestry.com. You know, they're, they're really so you, need, you need to you need to you need to invest a few more dollars and do African Ancestry and Twenty Three and Me. And then we can talk. Cause we don't want to use uh, uh, ancestry. Yeah, uh, they actually, actually, they were pretty accurate. And why? Because all my cousins that did the shit right, they popped up. First cousin, second. Yeah, cousin, yeah. My, um, mine did too. Mine did too. But they don't get more. You need to get more uh, detail on exactly. Oh, yeah, try, try, exact exactly. Tribe, you know? Yeah, I, that, exactly. that, I, that, that I'm gonna do. You know, the tribe. It, will, they just it, will, it will determine which tribe if you do African ancestry. And if you do 23 and me, what about Mali? It what about Mali? Get, yeah, Mali? it'll probably give you some of those same countries, but it's going to be more detailed and it's going to give you the percentages. We can okay. use the percentages as well. Okay. So I would advise folks to do 23 and me or African ancestry, shell out a few dollars because the information be invaluable. And if you do come back to Sierra Leone, you could qualify for citizenship. It's a beautiful country. Um, we're trying to do some different things there. We're trying to showcase the country. It, it's, it's the Civil War has been over with twenty years. There's no lions. Come yeah. take it. <laughs> Come take a tour with us. <laughs> and we appreciate. Yeah, big the up, big up Sierra Leone, man. Like I, said, I, like I said, I'm all in support. Sierra Leone, Liberia, those two countries right there, is the land of, to me the land of return. You know. Absolutely, yeah. we have a we have a rich history with those two countries in particular. Uh, coming here from the states, yeah. So in the diaspora, so yeah. So I'm okay. subscribed to your channel. I'm subscribed to your channel. That's perfect. So family, as you see, we're all connected. And if you see people out there, they're moving around to where they're not united and connecting to other uh, black people that's doing progressive things. You may want to keep away from them because right. that's a recipe for disaster. Uh, so, uh, so family, and, and my final thoughts, um, uh, visit our website, africafordafricans.org. Uh, you're on YouTube with me right now, so you can just uh, uh, search the YouTube, um, my YouTube playlist, the YouTube page itself, a whole lot of documentation, conference calls, tours, investment, travels, uh, us just connecting, networking, this interviews, just a whole lot of positive vibrations and energy. Uh, so we're getting ready to launch off this another wonderful uh, tour year. This is the uh, 16th tour year on the Africa for Africans. So congratulations. To travel to, appreciate you, brother. Uh, absolutely. And we're going to uh, take it to one of those journeys where you started off with. Uh, in, uh, uh, you know, we're getting ready to go in May, May 24th, June, and return June 5th. Then we're going to head out to Tanzania, and that's uh, November 17th. Uh, to the 28th, and then uh, return back to Ghana December 24th to January 5th, and then launch off 20, uh, 23 with uh, Senegal and the Gambia, and that's March 31st to April 10th. So those are the schedules on the website, and the details of the information for the uh, Black Star pan African community is right there on the same website. And as I mentioned, family, everything is organized there for you to process and check out. And our brother Goham just gave his details also. The same thing to process the details and reach out to us and call us directly and have a conversation. And don't go by hearsay or what other people want to talk about. This is our business. So reach out to us directly. This is the kind of 
situations that we're in nowadays. If you want to get accurate information, because we turn around, we have every, we have all kind of fake little want to want to be BBC journalists. <laughs> going around trying to, to you know basically rejects trying to build a career on uh youtube um you know so you know we just want to just educate people to just be sharp and do the right thing and and you know we just keep on going and i uh, remember this um, the, the positive revolutionary energy would, would always just overcome the situation so that's what we do in family so come and enjoy paradise with us as you can see when you look up we have in paradise we're having a great time in life uh, look at what other people are, are up to that are encouraging you. Look at what their lifestyle is. Yeah. You know, you know, uh, brother, uh, go have your travel with us, man. You, you see all the type of fun that we have in all the countries from South Africa, Tanzania, Senegal. Man, I've, had, I've, had, I've had a blast. I've had a Ghana, blast. Five countries. I can't, I can't say nothing, but I've had a blast. I've been all over the world. But when I go with my money and we get together, boy, we are hell to deal with. <laughs> I can't love it. Now we taking that into to Sierra Leone, so I'm looking to get to Liberia. I'm I'm going to uh, Nigeria with Dinas. So we spreading the money around amongst the, the brothers who have basically um, encouraged us to get off the couch and actually take a trip. That's where it all starts. <laughs> when you go to Liberia, I got the people. I got the and people. Go. For you, I got the people on the ground. Yeah, we gotta do that seriously on Liberia, man. I'm definitely gonna. I got, gonna, I got, uh, the, I got the itinerary. I got all the stuff on the ground. You need to uh, like that. Just join the link site, social network, man. I got the on the ground, Liberia. No, brother, take that's care. That's so tough. I will appreciate both of you as usual and family. Appreciate um, everyone hey, that's been. Uh, remember, yo, remember Africa. Yo, remember the live Africa. on a playback Africa for the Africans. Africa, Africa for keep Africa. it strong. <laughs> yes, All right, peace. All right, perfect. So, family, uh, good night. Uh, you take care. All right, peace, brothers. All right, peace.